Hello and welcome to the first semi-final game of the 16th season of the Africa TV StarCraft League brought to you by Hot6. It's been a season filled to the brim with unforeseen results with just four players remaining. Today's match will determine the first finalist of the season as the two players eagerly await their bout. Today's contenders are two-time runner-up Rush, once again showing up in full force and, with a likewise steady performance so far, Solki. Let's take a look at their trials and tribulations this season and the path they took to get here. First up, let's take a look at Rush's match history, who gets to the semi-finals not having met Solki this season. A clean start in the round of 24, with a first place finish in his group, followed up by a likewise solid record in the round of 16, beating Mini and Mind to take first place with just a single map loss. Once again, a good showing in the round of 8 for Rush, as he took down Hero in one fell swoop with a clean series to move on to the semi-finals. Now, let's take a look at Solki in the opposite corner. Despite dropping the first game in the round of 24 against Calm, Solki came back with wins over Sea and Rain to secure second place in his group. A formidable challenge in the round of 16 notwithstanding, Solki beat Bisu and Hero to get a first place seed in the quarterfinals. Meeting JYJ in the round of 8, who had eliminated him from the previous season, Solki turned the series around after dropping the first two maps to move on to today's semi-final game. Now let's take a side-by-side -side look at their overall ASL record. Interestingly enough, both players only met the opposing Zerg and Terran races respectively in all of their round of four matches. Both times, Rush managed to win and move on to the finals, whereas Solki unfortunately lost on both occasions, missing out on the finals. So, What's the scenario for either player getting into the finals? If Rush wins today, this will be the fifth season in a row with a Terran in the finals. This would also be Rush's third ASL finals, something only Flash has managed to achieve as a Terran player. On the other hand, if Solki were to win, this would be his first finals in his entire 14 season long ca career in ASL, becoming the seventh Zerg finalist behind Effort, Zero, Lava, Shine, Hero, and and Soma. This would also mean a Zerg player in the in the finals for the fifth time in a row since Lava in Season 11. So, we've taken a look at both players' record ahead of today's semi-finals game. Now, what do their fellow com competitors think of this round of four bout? We asked this season's round of 16 players to share their predictions. Eight players in total, barring Baxter, Mind, Hero and Bisu, predict Solki to come out victorious. Or perhaps it's Solki's counter-attack potential from round of eight that made an impact on these opinions. Stay tuned to see if today's game goes according to the ASL players' predictions. Now, what do the viewers think of today's? Uh, what do the viewers think today's outcome will be? According to a poll running until yesterday evening, ASL viewers are ever so slightly leaning towards Solki, with a 50.35 chance to win today. This really seems to be a difficult to predict round of four game, even for the fans. You're watching the first semi-final of the Afrika TV StarCraft League Season 16 with Hot 6. Who's going to become this season's first finalist? Uh, finalist? Rush or Solki? Let's start the game and find out.
We are moments away from the first showdown of the round of four of ASO 16 with Hot 6. As we wonder what today's match holds in store, let's have a word with Russian Sulky standing here today on the semi-finals stage. First up, Rush. You caught the Zerg. Yes. With a 3-0. Yes. You advance and lo and behold a Zerg again. Undefeated so far and on the way to the finals. Round of four and a Zerg again. Sulky the Iron Wall. How do you feel about this? Well, for starters, it's good I managed to advance at the back of TVZ, which is my most confident matchup. Our practice seems to be going well, so uh, I'm full of confidence. Extremely solid, extremely competitive, ready to strike back. Sulky took down uh, last season's champion in JYJ. Look at this and that match. What are your thoughts? Sulky was playing quite poorly uh, at the start and then all of a sudden he started doing really well. That kind of made me worried and meant I would have to practice with diligence. You say you're nervous but you're laughing. Is this really a time for jokes? Uh, no, no, you're right. No, he's not an easy opponent. Oh, that's why you're laughing. I get it. Sulky, the Iron Wall. You've shown strong form but until now, every single time you've made it into the round of four, you lost. You lost every time. You didn't win a single round of four. Last time, it went all the way to game seven, but you still got swamped. Your opponent today is Rush. Do you think things will be different today? After all, you did beat JYJ. Well, Rush is good, but as I've already said, he's going to be a more comfortable opponent to go up against. So I also had an easier time preparing. I'm confident I prepared a lot. And how does Rush differ from JYJ? With JYJ, you never know what he'll do, but Rush looks predictable. Predictable Terran, plain Terran, one trick pony. Well, he's saying you're predictable and easy to read. Well, even though I might be predictable, my play is not easy to stop. I managed to get to the round of four and all my opponents so far thought I was predictable, but they still lost. So in your opinion, where is Sulky lacking? If he thinks I'm a predictable Terran, then I think he's a predictable Zerg too. We're both micro-focused players, so that's how I feel. One trick micro. You guys are firing shots at each other. He says you're super easy to read, Sulky. Well, fair enough. We both seem to have similar opinions about each other. I still think the game itself today should be interesting. So if today goes according to plan with how you prepared, what score do you predict? It should, all go, it should go all the way to the rubber match. Game 7 for sure, it won't be easy. Are you going to break this streak of bad luck? Anytime I've cast your best of fives, save for two series and the one last week, you lost every time. Well, that's correct. I've shown poor form in best of fives, but I did prepare a lot ahead of today, so I'm confident. And do you have anything to say to Rush? Rush, I don't think you'll take the trophy. I'm going to advance and win the whole thing. In any case, you are not winning the finals, he says. Even if I can't win the season, I first need to advance today. That's what I'm thinking. So if nothing changes, you'll take this with a 402 uh, with a 40 score today too. Well, as far as the score goes, I think we'll go all the way to game seven, or close to game seven. This game isn't a trifle. I'll, I'll do my best regardless. Any final words for Sulky? I've made it into the fans before, and I'll be doing it again. So. It's between Sulky, who hasn't got past the round of four yet, and Rush, as we decide half of our finals bracket. What are you going to show us today, Sulky? I'll do what I can to show a good game today. Understood. That does it for the interview. Please give a warm round of applause as we start today's semi-finals game.
시즌 16번째 8강 유영진 조 1장 출전 선수 대부분입니다 4강 이상이에요 러시 타이밍 들어갑니다 와 주영진 한 번에 칼 같은 러시 이조조안 통해요 안 통해요 근데 아니 더블 맥슬로 12킬 선수 맥슬로 이고 나가는 경기가 거의 처음이 아닌가 유영진 선수의 3대0 이제 퍼펙트 숨을 만들어내면서 4강 진출 일어났습니다 와또 만났어요. 우승자 음. 디펜딩 챔피언 정영재 선수. 최재 아, 이대영. 천하의 김민철이 끌려다니기만 하면서 위기를 맞이한 김민철 선수. 그래도 그래도 그래도. 이게 가드라디 파일러 조합이에요. 와 바로. 김민철의 말도 안 되는 역심에 성공하면서 4강 진출 복수 성공. 태랑과 저그의 진짜 끝을 볼수 있는 이런 매치업이 지금은 만들어졌다고. 생애 최초 결승 진출 이번 시즌 다시 한번 결승 진출 더 높은 곳까지 다시 한번 도전할 수 있을 만한 때가 아닐까요? 풀 세트에서 항상 무릎을 꿇었었던 김민철 선수 최재 최재 역전극이 나왔습니다 아, 역수입을 하는 과정에서 경기가 거듭되면 거듭될수록 무언가 깨달음을 얻은 것 같은. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the start of the round of four here in the ASL. Artosis, how are you doing, buddy? Oh, man, Tasteless. I am so pumped for these matches. The fact that we get two Terran matches in the round of four, as always, uh, and they're best of sevens, I could not be happier. Yeah, and you know... This one we've got to uh, to, to decide who is going to be one of the two players to get to the finals. This is a fun one. It's going to be Rush versus Solky. I think this is a pretty even fight. Uh, it's very cool to see Rush back again, very deep in an ASL, possibly going to take the whole thing. But I also think that this is a path that could be very doable for Solky. We could end up actually seeing Solky take an ASL. Yeah, yeah, definitely could be the case. I mean, this is a tough match, though, right? It looked like he was very much on the ropes there against JYJ after the first two games. But he did come back uh, in an amazing fashion, like the way that he won some of these games with, with tactics, strategies we never really see was ultra impressive. So, you know, I think that it's going to be a very difficult match either way. But honestly, Tasis, I am kind of leaning towards Rush for this one. Well, Rush is just looking so strong and so consistent. Um, really, like, you know, as, as Flash is absent in the last couple of ASLs, we're seeing a situation where Rush has really come in um, and been one of these dominant modern Terran leaders. And... Um, he's been extremely consistent, so I think it's a pretty reasonable take to assume he could go uh, far again. Yeah, yeah. He, well, he's he's in great shape. He does have very strong Terran versus Zerg as well. Uh, so I guess I guess we'll see what they have planned because I feel like this is going to be a very prepped match. You know, with seven maps, with very different maps in there, uh, I think they're both going to have a lot of different plans that they're trying to trick each other with. So uh, it, it could be very decisive, but... I do feel like it's going to go at least six games here tonight. Yeah, this should be a real back and forth. Um, kind of a crazy uh, set of stories that make up what is the the 16th season uh, of the ASL. Protoss is basically getting killed off left and right, while Zergs, um, you know, a lot of the underdog Zergs are really pushing through. We do still have many on the other side of the bracket, so... That would be kind of a magical end to the ASL if we did get him into a final after having almost no Protoss games in this tournament at all. Um, but here we are now. We've got two players that are very scary, very solid at the matchup that they're playing um, against each other. And it does seem like, you know, down the middle, it's very split as far as who mm -hmm. thinks, uh, you know, with fans and professional gamers, you know, who's going to take this. Yeah, I just noticed uh, kind of an interesting thing with the maps is that uh, Sulky chose Invader as his first map as opposed to Tempest, which is a, a pretty darn good map for Zerg vs. Terran. So kind of interesting there. Of course, you can see that both of these guys are like... <laughs> it's been a while since they haven't been in the round of eight, basically. Like, they are they are generally up there. And, uh, yeah, definitely two of our highest-performing players. You know, when you see a round of four with Rush and Sulky in it, 
you kind of wonder what year it is. You know, it could be just about any time. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, Sulky has always been uh, on the very top of whatever game he's playing. This is a player who had um, incredible success in StarCraft 2 as well, switched right back into StarCraft 1 and kind of carried on with that success. Um, and, you know, Rush is somebody who's always stuck with StarCraft 1, been grinding it out for a long time. He was one of the guys I had to really familiarize myself with when we came back to uh, casting StarCraft 1. You know, we had, I, I want to say, was it like eight years of really not casting any StarCraft mm -hmm. 1? And then coming coming back and seeing who was good and uh, who was not good, <laughs> frankly, and, and what the meta looked like was a really fun learning experience here. But someone I definitely had to, to figure out was Rush. Yeah, yeah. He actually, uh, for people that watched back, you know, before StarCraft 2 came out, uh, Rush was still just an up-and-coming player, like a B-teamer type guy. In fact, if anyone's seen Nalra's old boy, you know that like famous old show that, that Nalra did when he tried to return? Rush was uh, one of the, the Terran players that he was thrown against a lot that the coaches didn't really need to practice for the higher league. So uh, he's been around, but really he's come into himself in only the last couple of years. Yeah, and, you know, he's just been playing phenomenally i think he does like i say this with the, these other terran players we have too his own approach to the race i think when we started out uh in the very early days of starcraft one especially with terran it seemed like there was maybe only one or two ways to play the race and the longer the game's been out the more ways we can see the the, the matchups can be approached from the terran perspective you can be hyper aggressive all the way back to super conservative um uh, and kind of macro oriented or you can even be a very cheesy Terran um, so you know it's been a fun time I think you know for anybody who's a fan of Terran to watch uh, all these great players rise up and, and, and approach the race in their different ways yeah yeah and uh, you know Sulky as far as ways to end up approaching Zerg and the different ways to play it I feel like Sulky maybe has the widest range of Pretty much all the Zergs at this point, like the guy will four pool all the way to the turtliest macro game you've ever seen. Uh, he's pretty much on the cutting edge of the Zerg meta. I wouldn't say as much as someone like Soma, but, uh, you know, he definitely uses a lot of the new strategies like Hydra, Lurker, Defiler against Terran. Uh, definitely one that I would like to see out of him today because I think he is one of the stronger players uh, of that style. I think we're very lucky that we have these two players specifically duking it out. I think this is going to make for some pretty insane, long, dramatic, and maybe even, uh, you know, some crazy, cheesy games here as well. Um, I like that you pointed out that really Sulky can, can approach the game from any direction. And it's very hard to predict in each game which Sulky are you going to see. Are you going to see that four-pull Sulky? Are you going to see that turtled out, uh, wear you out, uh, I'm never going to let you get into my base uh, kind of play. Or is he going to do that very modern macro style? You all, uh, you know, sorry, Hydra style, uh, where you're going for plague and, and just gunning down Marines, one-shotting him. Um, he has so many different approaches. And, and I think that's strategically, he may be the most sound player at times in the ASL. He might be. That's actually, that's kind of a cool take. Uh, but you might be right about that. Like he's, he actually plays it in the way where he realizes he's going for percentages, right? Where it's like, well, this is not always going to work, but I need to do this to set up the rest of my play so that people are not taking liberties against me too much, which a lot of Zergs don't do. Uh, so that could actually factor into Rush's mind when he's really thinking about the way Sulky plays. Like, does he do any games with double racks in the center? Does he do any games with command center first? When he knows that Sulky's more likely to do a Zergling Rush than basically any other macro Zerg in the world yeah i mean that th that's what's going to make this a lot of fun and for rush you know uh, how many games are we going to see him go for mech we did see an insane uh game that uh, sulky had versus jyj where he really showed he's got a very good handle on that mm -hmm. um rush isn't the first player i think of with mech in, in this matchup but he is somebody who's shown that he is capable of, of, of going that route and we could go up to seven games here. So there's there's a lot to unpack here as we're going to see what kind of TVZ this is going to be. And actually, it looks like we're already ready to hop into this, guys. This is a best of seven. And the winner of this will be going on into the finals of season 16 of the ASL.
Okay, we have uh, both players hugging the right side of the map here on Polypoid. In the top right, it is Rush. And in the bottom right, with the Overlord headed northbound, it's Sulky. Um, real quick here, guys. Uh, if you want to support us, please go to patreon.com forward slash ASL English. We appreciate the support. We hope to earn your support. Uh, you guys are helping keep the history of StarCraft alive. This game is a quarter of a century old, which is insane. As I say it, it feels weird as it comes out of my mouth. Uh, and it's still <laughs> going strong. It's still fun. People are still learning about it. And um, yeah, I mean, what what a cool time to be alive to have the OG esports still going so strong. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I expect that when we are in our mid 60s days list, we're going to be like, yeah, can you even believe we've been playing StarCraft for 50 years? <laughs> I, I honestly <laughs> think that'll happen uh, as long as our wrists don't give out by then. But uh, that is that is a, a great thing. And thank you, everyone, for that support. Again, patreon.com forward slash ASL English. So getting into this game, um, we did have, I, I actually didn't catch when the pool was made. Was that just a, that, okay, so this is actually yeah. gonna be a nine pool, unless it's going to be an extractor trick cancel. Yes, it is going to be an extractor trick cancel um, versus a barracks and depot on the low ground. Yeah, yeah. So a nine pool, that's that's kind of interesting. Um, Sulky is actually in the only position on Polypoid that has a Zergling tight wall. So by doing a nine pool from this position, he does know if his opponent is walling in, there is some potential uh, for for dealing some damage. Like Polypoid has pretty wide chokes, so it's actually like a a two marine tall hole in the wall, right? So like you actually need to bring multiple SCVs to block that. It looks like he scouts that barracks, sends his drone around. Uh, if Rush doesn't know this is coming, which it looks like he won't because he's doing this ultra greedy, very late scout style, there there is some potential for damage here. And it looks like the SCV is unfortunately not going to the south. It's going to be heading out uh, over to the very opposite corner <laughs> oh. of where Sulky is. And so he's not going to have a lot of time to try to react here. Dude, uh, it notice that the drone just getting a few extra hits on whatever he can get before the lings are going to come in and do a lot of damage. That was actually big brain from Sulky too. He he wrapped the drone around to come from that angle so Rush thought he came from the left. Like that was really yeah. smart. And look at this. He's bringing the lings in from the left there, making them seem at the last second. The Marines are not ready for it. SCVs have to come down and fight. That is a great block though, but Sulky will end up killing both these Marines. Yeah, he's got a couple lings left. He did have one Zergling kill the SCV that was trying to complete that command center. And, um, you know, the lings are going to keep trickling in. And, you know, Marines are, are so bad versus Zerglings until you can get a couple of them. And in this case, that Marine never even fired a shot. He died with his gun full of the bullets. <laughs> Artosis. He didn't um, even use any ammo. I hope the next Marine goes and picks it up. <laughs> Dude, this is and, uh, so successful, Tasteless. He's killed, he's killed like three Marines. He might get this fourth. I bet, oh yeah, he's gonna get a fourth Marine here. Like, Sulky is doing fantastically with this rush. I mean, this is doing exactly what it was engineered to do. I don't think we're necessarily gonna see the game end, but we could. Uh, there are still links heading up in pairs. Um, Terran is behind, but you know, what the Zerg opened up with didn't come without its own sacrifices. There's not a lot of drones um, being made here, but the layer is already uh, on the way. So the Spire is going to be there shortly after that. Two more lings are going to come up just as this next Marine pops out. And tell you what, man, I mean, Rush is not uh, out of this yet. This is one of the biggest headaches ever. That was a beautiful position for him to put it into, but even there doesn't lose a ling as of yet. Another Marine comes down after cleaning out the main base. And like I think that's the end of the pressure as this uh, as this ling will get picked off, but like that was incredibly good, dude. We're four minutes and thirty seconds in. Rush has two marines. He lost a ton of mining time. Without a doubt, Sulky took an advantage with that rush. But you're right; it, it was a nine pool. He made a lot of lings, so he's not as far ahead as you may think after something like that. We just saw the first uh, refinery made in the game at four minutes and 45 seconds. So look, yeah, Zerg made sacrifices, but those sacrifices ultimately paid off. We're seeing a very 
staggered uh, Terran, you know, trying to develop and trying to get to where uh, he needs to be. And remember that, you know, assuming this is just your straight up uh, two hatch muta, which it appears to be exactly that, most Terrans have to have everything perfectly lined up to even be ready to, to fend off the Mutalisk Rush. I mean, the Academy is about halfway done and this Spire is almost <laughs> finished. So the next couple of moves here could be so abusive. Um, it's possible that, you know, with Rush already limping into this game, the damage is just going to get worse once the Mutalisks hatch and get over there. Yeah, it seems like that's that's a, a decent uh, proposal there as the engineering bay just got started. Uh, he needs that to finish, and he needs his turrets done before the Mutas get over. And that that seems a bit far-fetched to me right now that he's going to time this out perfectly. You know, it's really hard to read exactly when your opponent has a Spire in a game like this. Uh, but he does start his, his bunker here. If he starts, the second that these this eBay finishes, if he starts those turrets, he might have them just in time. But yeah, the Mutas are flying across now. They're going to get there before the turrets are done. Yeah, the bunker's going to finish here as well. Um, and I mean, you know, with the Mutas already out, it's possible they could try to come through and just pick off these SCVs, go right up into the main. And, and the Lings actually run by as well. Oh, man. Kills one SCV there, two SCVs. Going after the turrets as well, jumping on top of some of these Marines. Solky dealing as much damage as he can, but not that bad. Rush is dealing with this very tough situation pretty darn well. Yeah, so far so good. Uh, the Mutalisks are going to try to come around now. You know, it was, it was a decision Solky had to make is do I just try to hit the closest location, which is where the natural is at, and do damage there? Do I try to go around and maybe hit in the main in case the turrets are being finished a little bit later? But it does seem like Rush is buttoned up pretty tight now. It does seem like, okay, so a Muta can, for instance, snipe an SCV back there like that. But overall, things have stabilized pretty nicely for the Terran. Yeah, he, he, I, I'm impressed and surprised of how well he's done. He's actually got a very healthy turret count, uh, very good defense here. You can see that obviously there are issues. He's only on two barracks. Oh my gosh, he starts two more barracks here. That's not what I expected to see. Uh, it, it, like the fact that he's going to go heavy marine medic, but this late. If Sulky goes into lurkers, I can't see him losing this game, but... If he stays on Mutaling and tries to finish it, that might be where Rush can catch him. Uh, what do you think about this hatchery placement here from Sulky? This is another strategic move here. He's not taking the typical main location, not the bottom left, not the top left uh, starting location. Instead, he goes for a natural, which means it's very likely that Rush is going to scan and just keep scanning and not find where that third base is. Yeah, well, I I don't know. Like, it's it's so much closer. It feels like it opens up an opportunity here for Rush because he added two additional barracks before his factory. But I think that Sulky assumes it's going to be a tech build, which means there's no chance he could attack across to bottom left. Like, that's that's kind of my, my read here is that Sulky is assuming it's going to be what everyone would assume, and that might be where Rush gets to punish him is because of that greedy base. Uh, the den is almost done, so lurkers are going to be at play up here. Um, Sulky's still staying outside. We don't have any confirmation if he's going to get that air. Oh, no, he is going to get that air attack upgrade. Excuse me. We just saw that uh, as the observer showed us. So it does look like uh, Sulky is going to be very okay to try to take a fight with Rush if he moves out. But with the four barracks that you were pointing out, Artosis, maybe Rush can still overpower him. Yeah, there, there is that possibility. He actually flies up. And now I think he just saw exactly how many racks there are. So he's going to have to play a little bit more carefully because of that. Uh, but look at how late the factory is. Look how late the starport is, right? Like, it, we're, we're like a minute and a half late on basically all of the tech. So it feels to me like Sulky still has plenty of time to get what he needs. And we just saw Rush throw down that add-on as well. So he's going to be going uh, Siege Tanks as well as Vessels. And you know what? The Queen's Nest is a little bit late here from Sulky. You know, he's he's been altering his game plan based on what's been happening here as well. So uh, definitely an interesting game where it feels like both players are, are playing off the cuff. It also makes me wonder, you know, when you have the uh, factory come out late, obviously then the starport's late, and then that means the science vessels are late. And so 
uh, watching this game, I feel like hold position lurkers, uh, if placed correctly, could be very punishing. But uh, um, we already have that hive coming down now. I see lurkers beginning to morph over here. But uh, yeah, definitely something to watch for there as well. Well, science facility is on the way. Rush right now trying to push out with these Marines and medics. Uh, you know, he, he's just trying to kind of have a forward position so that he can get out of his base really, really quickly. You don't want to stand behind everything. He's doing the work right now of pushing out. And look, he's hiding the siege tanks, which is kind of important. Uh, if Solki doesn't realize that it's a siege tank push, sometimes you can catch them off guard if they're slow at all getting to those defilers. Yeah, it's important uh, to create some ambiguity about what's happening because when you get those couple of tanks, you're, you're looking to get uh, either a win or at least an incredible amount of damage off at a very specific moment in the game. But these defilers are going to be out very soon, Artosis. This is a really quick hive tech. Well, he's coming up with the Lurkers right now and trying to bait him into those Lurker spines. In fact, goes up and burrows once again. This is really interesting with Solki's pushing this hard, but Rush, yeah, I was gonna say, he might be able to just stim in here and kill everything. Solki's being like maybe a little bit too aggressive with these lurkers. Yeah, it was a little bit insane to see anybody get that aggro with just three lurkers and mutas and no zerglings or anything else to tank. Um, and in that moment, Rush identified like, wait a minute, you don't have anything I have to respect here and actually comes in and gets a kill on that. Um, but, I mean, hey man, Solky's not stopping. He's gonna continue to push up here. We're getting into a position where it's possible. Oh, hold on, he's just gonna come right in again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, like you said, there's nothing there really to tank any damage. It, the fact that it's just like this medium amount of lurkers makes it kind of easy for Rush to push through. But uh, Solky does back up and we just caught the fact that Solky's going for a greater spire. That can be a very strong move against a build like this because you don't have many vessels. The push is going to come down now. Again, you know, the lurker counts. There's been a few lurkers picked off here and there. He needs to buy time. We saw the greater spire was being made. A huge irradiate, nicely done. Sulky does pull that injured mutilus scout. The lurkers are buying time, but he's going to have to unburrow again here. Uh, fortunately for um, Sulky, he's thinned the marine count out a little bit. And that's always the backbone of the Terran army. If you just have enough infantry, a lot of times you can overpower almost anything. Um, but look at this. He's going to come right out over here to where the entrance is. We only have two sunken colonies. A couple lurkers are going to rush up and see if they can catch a tank as it's sieging up. Ling's come around from the side, and I think Sol he's Ooh, done in Artosis. That was a great move to take down that vessel as well. He does end up sacrificing, I think, all of his mutas now. So I don't know that the Greater Spire is going to do anything for him, but it seems like with all the tanks dead, there's zero push potential from here, and Rush has to back up into just a standard SK Terran game, which is, I think, at, at this point, you look at Solky's layout, the way his bases are, Rush can't put too much pressure on him, which means Solky's gonna have four gases. Solky's really in control of this game. Yeah, uh, we talked about Rush needing to do, uh, hoping to do a lot of damage with that tank push. Well, it didn't do any. It was killed right before it could actually set up and, and begin to hammer the other player. Now, we've got another push in here, and I gotta say, you know, one theme that is consistent with at least game one with these two is that Asolki is super ambitious with his lurker pushes. And, you know, one of my favorite things that you've always said, Artosis, is that the worst thing that can happen to a Terran in mid game in this matchup is that dark a dark swarm cloud gets up in the natural mm. location. And you can see that Sulky is very, very eager to try to get that uh, up there now. Yeah, he's definitely trying quite a bit, but Rush pushes forward to make sure no reinforcements can come up and, and support with that extra Dark Swarm. So I love his forward movement there. Uh, it does look like Sulky's being a sneaky snake. He's moving his Defiler around that three o'clock base with some Zergling food. So he's really trying uh, to force that, that Dark Swarm in the natural that we've been talking about. But look, the Dark Swarm is running out and he is gonna run back. So Supports his lurkers at the last possible second. Wow, these guys are really on top of it right now. This is a great game so far, man. Uh, we've got the double dropship play coming in. Scourge gonna be here uh, just in time to maybe not intercept oh. this. It looks like both dropships actually live. That's rough. He was super close to killing both of those. What a different looking game we'd have at this point. But Rush gets all the units out. Going to go ahead, try to target this down, but Dark Swarms go down. So he has the Lurker defense he needs for now, but that doesn't mean the Marines are dead. 
Another Dark Storm Cloud comes down. The Lurker's continuing to edge in. Fire Bats now being made in huge numbers. And, you know, Rush is doing a very good job at just keeping the set of infantry alive. He didn't try to suicide them in to kill workers. He knows if he's just out here, uh, he can avoid the Dark Swarms uh, as long as he's attentive about it and just move to a new location and continue to do damage. Yeah, the Lurkers continuing to push up forward here uh, into that natural little bit. I, I'm not sure how much longevity they are going to have. Uh, once that Dark Storm goes off, it seems like they're going to get surrounded pretty quick. Uh, but Sulky's still dealing with this drop in his main, and he did lose a hatchery there, which is pretty painful. Okay, uh, excellent job from Rush, just collapsing on top of that. Looks like he needs one more scan, or at least the aid of a science vessel to clean up that last lurker. Why not both? Um, yeah, why not both? <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we've got two more drop ships, and you know we've been talking about what's been happening over at the Natural here for Rush a lot in this game. But uh, if this fourth base can get denied with another, you know, it's those same drop ships with the same amount of damage from uh, earlier, where the Scourge almost killed them off. If he can get the kill on this, that's going to be big. Zerk needs to get to four bases. And when Sulky's as aggressive as he is, he's also bleeding out a lot of lurkers. So he doesn't have the same kind of robust defense you normally see uh, in a game like this. And, you know, when you see this hatchery over here, you know, the main base hatchery is the fourth base. Normally that means you kind of get it for free, but apparently not in this game, Artos. <laughs> for real. That drop doing a fantastic job. Great micro here from Rush. Oh, my God. He gets the hatchery. It's crazy that those two very damaged dropships came in and killed that base as well. And now look at this stimming in. He's targeting down the Nidus, and Sulky may end up losing this game now, Tasis. Was he too aggressive with all those lurker pushes to the natural? I think the answer is yes. Um, you know, it, it, Sulky was scary this game until suddenly he was not. And that was, uh, you know, yeah, it, it, what what a rough game here for Solki to end up falling in. Uh, you know, he really looked like he was winning most of this, and suddenly here we are, Rush has killed like all of his bases. Not looking very good for our Zerg player anymore. Um, some more radiates coming down here. You could see immediately, you know, the last few lurkers go down. This game should be ending, I think, any second, because uh, that last attack out from Sulky was his attempt to try to force some sort of equalizer, some way to, to, to get uh, Rush pushed back into a spot where this game is going to be manageable. But instead, we're seeing yet another counterattack uh, pour down from the top of the map to the bottom. The Lurkers, you know, they can only buy so much time. At this point in time, there's so many vessels out and so much infantry. Yeah, he doesn't even need to try to irradiate or even defensive matrix anything. Yeah, yeah, Sulky, I saw him shake his head there as well a moment ago. I think he's really realized that this went from a, a position where he was really heavily favored into what is very much looking like a loss. He's still trying to pull something together. He's re-expanding the bottom left. You know, he's he's got a, a lurker under a dark storm at that third base, but that's not that impactful to rush. Uh, you know, I think he'll be able to clean that relatively quickly. Uh, but it, it, yeah, this is this is a game where Sulky just doesn't have much left. Yeah, I mean he's back on at two bases. I guess that hatchery at the bottom left is finished, but we can't really count that as a base until we have drones mining from it. Um, and it, it seems like we're, we're truly getting a, a game that illustrates the the double-edged sword of aggression. You know, sometimes yeah. aggression is, is fantastic. You, you can force these positions early on. Uh, if you're good at controlling, you can win these fights right away. But then, um, you know, when you're this aggressive, sometimes you don't have as much as you would have had if you were more of a conservative player. And so these overextensions result in, um, at times, nearly fatal blows here for Sulky. And we see him continuing to try to fight, continuing to try to force again. I think he literally just consumed an irradiated <laughs> lurker there yeah. just to get enough uh, Dark Swarm to advance the position again. And look, it is scary, but this, this, the total number of infantry that uh, Rush has, he's eventually able to just clean it up. He's actually made so many fire bats to deal with this as well. Very smart play there from Rush. But yeah, it, you know, you have to give some respect to Sulky. He was really trying to go for a victory. But, you know, when you're shoving that hard and losing that many lurkers and then your opponent just barely busts, you know, your whole bottom left area, 
Well, you you spent like seven lurkers. Seven lurkers on a more defensive stance are, are going to stop that from happening and you get into the later game. But yeah, it, you know, this is why Sulky sometimes loses matches. It looks like he shouldn't, but sometimes wins matches. It looks like he shouldn't as well. Another push is going to come up here from Sulky, but, you know, it's getting worse and worse. Terran has been ahead on a base for, uh, like, at least five minutes, I think, now. Uh, the Lurkers are going to come out, but there's more vessels than there are Lurkers, and that's uh, one of the worst <laughs> signs for a Zerg is, you know, when there's, uh, you know, multiple irradiates available to kill off the, the lesser number of Lurkers right there. It's going to be bad. Yeah, it, you know, <laughs> it's this game is pretty lost, but Sulky may be still using it to warm up a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not sure exactly what the mentality is. It does feel like it's an impossible game to win. Maybe maybe just because Rush is not mining that much. You know, we're getting to the point where the bases are getting uh, sucked completely dry at this point. But Sulky is about two minutes off of having no gas left. And he's going to go ahead and GG. Rush takes down game number one. But he was on the edge there for a moment. It really did feel like Sulky had the advantage early on. Yeah, I think Sulky was playing one of the best early games ever. You know, you see how crazy the end game was back there. It's easy to forget how it started. Uh, that was a nine pool that succeeded, that really tripped up Rush. And Rush just kind of hung on for dear life, fought back. And as we got far enough along in the game, uh, the position that Sulky had, had gained, that, that he had earned through all of his aggressive play, he was trying to force the win, and that's how Rush recovered. Rush was just able to absorb the uh, aggro blows to punish uh, Sulky when he just didn't quite have enough to pull off what he wanted to pull off. Um, and, you know, the, the dropships that are in this shot here, those are the same two dropships that uh, dropped in the main. A scourge hit mm -hmm. each of them. And yeah. so there are these funny butterfly effect moments where one thing happens in the game and had that one little instance been slightly different, the entire outcome would be uh, different. I guess yeah. that's really the story of Starcraft, but <laughs> imagine that even just one of those drop chips had been killed off, we probably would not have seen the main collapse here, or the uh, bottom left main collapse here for Stolke. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and not just that, right? Like the main base, he would have probably taken less damage as well. It is, it is absolutely one of these butterfly effect moments. Also, a huge shout out to the amount of fire bats Rush made. A lot of defense matrixes, uh, but the fire bats in general did an unbelievably good job of helping him break positions, defend, attack, just about everything. Well, you know, it, it makes sense when you're that ahead. I guess the fire bats really are the closing move, right? Because, um, you know, if you're even or the Zergs ahead, the fire bats kind of suck, right? I mean, they just get completely annihilated by the lurker spikes, but. When there's just two or three lurkers, hey man, seven or eight fire bats can get the job done. Yeah, yeah. It, it, what what a great game though. That was such a good one to actually uh, open up on here. You can see the the crowd absolutely hyped, and they should be. What if we have a best of seven where all the games look like that? I'll be pretty happy. Yeah, that was a fun one to to follow, and um, I mean we're just getting warmed up here. So many more games to come here, uh, and again. Uh, really oh, oh actually guys we're gonna go to that break right now we will be back in a little bit up next is gonna be invader
지금 기분을 다섯 글자로 표현한다면 한진대 최일장 선수 끊어내면서 4강 진출 러시 완전 세진다? 제가 그러니까 다전제를 좀 이제 많이 해봤는데 3대 0으로 이긴 건 처음이에요. 저본 적은 있어도. 뜻깊은 순간인 것 같습니다. 비행기. 일주일에 휴가가 주어진다면 여행하고 싶고 육아도 휴가인가요? 나가. 아 그러면은 아직 신혼여행을 못 갔거든요. 코로나 시기가 겹쳤어가지고 그 다음에 이제 하루가 태어나고 이제 신혼여행을 못 갔는데 누가 이렇게 시까지 이제 휴가가 주어진다면은 신혼여행을 한번 좋은 데로 가고 싶네요. 어 예전에 정해놨던 거는 몰디브 하와이 생각했었는데 그두 개. <웃음> 머리 아픈 순간? 머리가 아픈 데 있는? 치고 싶은 나의 단점이 있다면? 딱히 <웃음> 단점이 딱히 떠오르진 않는데 성격이 가끔가다 더러워가지고 그걸 좀 네, 고치고 싶네요 <웃음> 장점은 상실함? 초반에 좀 많이 말렸어요 전체적으로 근데 라캄파넬라는 불리한 상황에서 제가 지지를 칠까 고민던 시점도 있었는데 그거를 좀 이제 풀어 나가기 위해서 이제 운영적으로 넘어간 부분에서 좀 잘했던 것 같아요. 그때 이제 평소에 연습 많이 하는 게 나온 것 같아서 네, 노력 평생의 운동인 것 같아요. 멘탈이 깨졌을 때 나만의 힐링 방법은 저는 멘탈이 깨지고 스트레스 받으면은 잠을 자요. 그냥 잠잘 수 있으면 잠을 자면은 좀 멘탈도 괜찮아지고 스트레스도 좀 풀리고 하더라고요. 어 아니요 애기 키우느라 많이는 못 자고 항상 아침 8시에 일어나거든요 일어났다가 다시 잠드는데 어디 그렇게 많이 자지는 않는데 그래도 잠을 자면 좀 스트레스 풀리더라고요 마지막으로 입술 어이구 요즘 제일 많이 하는 말은 게임을 너무 못한다라고 제가 멘탈 말을 해요 제 폼이 좀안 좋은 시기여서 아, 게임이 너무 안 된다 질거 같다 못한다 이러는데 근데 막상 대회 때 경기력을 보면은 지금까지 제가 한것 중에 경기력이 제일 괜찮은 것 같아서 좀 모르겠어요 좀 이게 게임을 못 하다 보니까 더 많이 연습을 해서 좀 결과가 잘 나오는 것 같기도 해요 네 공적별 동지 아, 1위 네. 영진님 몇개오 <웃음> 유영진? 저사람아저 사람 아, 어, 테란들은 근데 아이 친구 있네 <웃음> 여기 누가 있었네 아, 영... 더 뽑을게요 <웃음> 이게 테란이 매우 빡세면 누군가는 말을 해줘야 되거든요. 근데 다들 좀 무능한 사람들밖에 없어서 저라도 그냥 할 말을 한다 이런 마인드인데 솔직히 다른 사람들은 손안 대고 코 푸는 느낌이에요 거의. 제가 다 맞죠. 민철이는 제가 인정하는 저그 딱두명 중에 한 명이거든요. 만나면 껄끄럽지만 재밌는 승부 해보고 싶습니다. 4강 준비 잘해가지고 꼭 이겨보도록 하겠습니다. 파이팅! Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for waiting. It's time to go into game two. And whenever you get a series like this, look, um, I expect this to be a back and forth, but uh, the guy that wins game one, if he can win game two, then even win game three, I mean, that's when things really get out of control. It's essential for Sulky to stabilize uh, in this series to start to try to come back. A best of seven is a long <laughs> and dramatic and uphill fight. And uh, are you laughing at me or toasting? Yeah. Are you back there? Well, I'm like, hmm, I have my secret caster move to counter what Tasteless just said because Sulky <laughs> went down 0 2 against JYJ. It looked kind of dominating from JYJ, came back in 3 0. And you had pointed out when we were casting that, he has like the only reverse all kill in GSL Codes Finals history against Innovation. So. What I'm thinking, Tasteless, is he needs to lose the first three games if he's going <laughs> to win this series. So what do you think about that, Tasteless? I mean, you're right. <laughs> you're so good at this, Sartosis. Damn. Um, I, I, don't, I wouldn't want to so, be you right now, Tasteless. Oh, the no, laughing I mean, stock. There's definitely some, <laughs> some egg on my face for that stupid <laughs> thing I opened up this segment with. Guys, we're going into game two here. Silky vs. Rush continues on. Okay, onto the map, Invader. Rush in the top left and Sulky in the bottom right. 
Dude, I'm very excited to see what Sulky's plan is on this map, okay? So Invader being a two-player map, uh, generally two-player maps like kind of lean towards Terran in this matchup because it's hard for Zergs to secure a fourth base. There's never, you know, Zergs like the layout of having another main to go to, so they have an easily defendable ramp that goes down into a natural base that they can move to under the cover of, like, one Dark Swarm, right? So it's, like, pretty easy to get a fourth base once you have that secured. On a three-player map, you don't really get that option. But this was Solky's first map pick. Like, this was, you know, a rush shows he's like, okay, I want to play Polypoid first. And then Solky said, "Okay, the first map I want is Invader." So that that strikes me as odd. I don't I don't quite get it. I don't know what his idea is. The only thing that comes to mind that might be good is there's a lot of paths that you could try to sneak like Lurker Defiler up for those counterattacks that we saw from Solky in the previous game. So maybe it's that, but maybe it's something else altogether. Yeah, I, I really want to see how Solky approaches this. You know, it did seem like he had game one in the bag, but tried to force a win when he probably should have just bided his time a little bit more. Um, and on this map, we once again have Rush going for that expand opening despite being punished. Uh, oh my God, hold on a second. Command center first, huh? Command center first. Yeah. That's off of what happened in game one with the nine pool. So that's some pretty, <laughs> pretty ballsy stuff, actually. Uh, but it doesn't look like Sulky's going to rush this game. So... <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, Rush is navigating this very nicely. He's going to mine one extra mineral uh, just because the SCV is already there and then start that command center. And this is going to be a very good build order advantage. Command center first versus hatchery first. Command center first, much, much stronger. For sure. Yeah, I mean, anytime you get away with command center first, you have an advantage. It's like the the greediest thing that happens basically in this game uh, as, as Terran generally can't do something like that. But... Um, you know, uh, I, I'm not sure. I almost feel like, um, from from Sulky's point of view, are we ever going to see like a meta where you go nine pool so that you can nine pool them the second game, <laughs> right? Because I feel like I see <laughs> yeah, this a, a lot question. from Terrans where they're like, "You already zergling rush. You're not going to do that again. You're not going to you're not going to risk having a really poor economy against a standard opener. So I'm going to be greedy." And I feel like, damn, Sulky, you just barely missed it. Like this. Imagine if he had nine pooled here, free win. Yeah, it's funny how that works out. Uh, so there's a drone to block the uh, the entrance here. This should always raise some eyebrows. Uh, whenever you see a drone that's just cutting that off, it's like, are you hiding something? What's happening? Yeah, that's that's really annoying. What you're thinking about here? Ooh, he gets through. Okay, uh, reasonable block from Solky. Uh, but what you're thinking about is like, is this a three hatch or is this a two hatch play? And he gets in, so he's gonna go ahead and see that it is in fact a two hatch play. He's gonna prepare for you know two hatch mutilisk most likely, uh, and it looks like he's just gonna send the SCV out immediately. Yeah, he's gonna send that out right away. Um, this Marine is just going to try to chase his Overlord back. Notice that he did slip a little SCV out down the ramp. I don't know if the Overlord spotted that, but he does have a second scouter on the map. Oh, okay. That that makes a little bit more sense now that he wanted to send a secondary scout, maybe from, like, a different angle. Uh, you know, see if he can sneak in and, and just confirm something like the Spire is being made. Uh, plus one not started, by the way. So he, that's actually a mistake. Like, the second that finishes, the engineering bay, when you go for a very quick engineering bay, you want that plus one. There you go. It gets it going. Uh, so not not that impactful. Uh, but, yeah, it looks like Rush is going to be going for probably just, like, four barracks plus one Marines. Terrans have really been liking that build again recently. Yeah, giving you a little bit of muscle to move out on the map and try to overpower the Zerg. And, look, it worked in that last game. I think more of a techie Terran in game one would have probably just gotten uh you know boxed in uh but instead having those marines enabled to lash out at the zerg on the map is a pretty good idea the scv is still scouting over here although i think most of the information has already been confirmed it's obviously going to be this three hatchery um spire play here uh on this map by the way is there a direction the terran uh and the zerg for that matter is more likely to grow in because you have two optional third bases, mm -hmm. one on that low ground, uh, the other obviously on that high ground location a little bit further away. Yeah, so I honestly don't know yet. 
it's it feels like it's still being thought of by Zerg players when they take a very fast third, like before making a, a you know when their third hatch is their third base. I've seen a lot of Zergs actually take bottom left uh, because it does have that very small ramp. Uh, but other than that, I think Sulky here probably has to take that three o'clock base. The big question is, you know, where where do you take your your fourth, right? And for Rush, though, like, I, I mean, I feel like he could expand in either direction. But you do have to keep an eye on the various attack paths and, and the possibility of, like, one of these Defiler Lurker backstabs. Look at that. A scan Crazy. doesn't quite reveal that <laughs> Evo Chamber. Not that that's, you know, the biggest find to see an Evo Chamber there, which is kind of funny. Uh, the turrets are going to be laid out now. And... Um, Remember that in game one, Rush survived the Muta Pressure totally fine, and he was actually hit with a nine pool that did a ton of damage. This time around, Rush has gone command center first. He has a lot of momentum behind him, uh, and it looks like he's more than ready for this uh, this Muta Rush that's coming in now. Yeah, command center first is generally going to be ready for absolutely anything thrown at it since you have such a big economy. In fact, he does have five barracks right now as opposed to four that you would have with a more regular expansion. So he's going to be able to produce just an ungodly amount of Marines and Medics. And since Sulky's going for that fast plus one carapace, like that that points towards probably like a, a crazy Zerg, although it could end up being like just plus one carapace for a heavy Ling Lurker mid game. Like it could be either one of those, but I feel like I, Rush's I, I build is good against both. Huh? We got it. We got, I know you like calling it crazy Zerg, which is what it's called. When you say crazy Zerg, what you actually mean, because it's not a descriptive way of <laughs> talking about the game. Is um, uh, uh, cracklings with ultralists, right? And yeah, just so it up. crazy zerg specifically means skipping lurkers and defilers. So it's like from okay. the mutas directly into ultras. And the way you do that is by getting a very fast plus one carapace and a very fast plus two carapace. Because that's kind of the break point where ultras become super strong. Is you have plus two before marines have plus two, and then you just have a big advantage. So that's that's crazy zerg. Every uh, every time I say crazy Zerg, you laugh at me. I don't. I didn't name it. <laughs> well, it's just it's, it's just like it's not. A, it's like not a name at all. It's so funny. I just, I, you've said it since I've known you. Like before you're even a casual. Like, oh, he's going crazy Zerg. Yeah. Um, so we saw Sulky try to take advantage of that ramp on the low ground and run into the main, but Rush actually had just enough. He just shut it down, no problem. The game goes on. Um, Back uh, on the map, I mean, Zerg is going to be taking a third base. I do feel like this third base is much, much, much more attackable that Zerg yeah. is taking. How it's, do you ever defend not that? The, yeah, it's not the base that you're thinking of the Zerg taking when you're the Terran. And keep in mind, uh, we didn't really have that much time to talk about this in game one. Mm. But basically, uh, in game one, he actually took a, a natural instead of a main. So he's been kind of sneaky about third bases, but sneaky, uh, not not sneaky anymore That's i don't know a solid snake base down there he just yeah. <laughs> finds this one and can probably push it well it looks like he will destroy this group of uh marines and medics but the bigger groups are coming across the map right now it really feels like rush has the best possible build for for this game and sulky is just there's no way like i, th I think sulky's literally just about to die right now it does feel like that. I mean, this push is going to come right down over here. There's many more waves of infantry coming uh, as well. We've got Mutas and Lynx cutting off reinforcements, but this core bulk is here right now. And this is going to kill this hatchery. And I mean, maybe he can overpower this with the Mutas and the Lynx? I guess the answer is yes, he can. But there's even more Marines coming down now. And oh my god, are we just going to see this game end? You know, if this had been a, a four barracks plus one, then I think he actually would have held that and killed everything. But yeah, in this case, this game's over, man. The game two is over, and Rush is going to be up two to zero. Oh wow! Look at Sulky putting his hand over his face for a second. Ooh! Taps out an unhappy, I guess a grimace on his face there as he GGs it. And Rush knows he's already halfway there. Hey man, maybe this is not going to be a long series. Yeah, yeah. It, like it is looking one side again. But don't forget, this is what happened against JYJ. I, I was surprised to see that he wanted Invader, and then the way he played it, I'm like, wait, are you are you trying to go for just Carapace upgrades and Ultras, a.k.a. Crazy Zerg? And then you take a base like that? Like, 
none of this really computes for me. So I'm not, I'm a little confused about the map choice, about the strategy choice. And as you see, he just got rolled over. Very discouraging game two. Rush, you know, despite getting beaten up by a nine pool in game one, goes for an even greedier play here in game two with command center first, uh, which of course can be punished in so many different ways. But I think he was confident that the way that Sulky approached game one would uh, have Sulky in a position where he would abandon aggression in game two. I mean, there is this art form and this dance that's happening between each of the games in the set. You know, when do I rush? When do I not rush? Because mm -hmm. if you become predictable, if you're nine pulling every game, well, then you're going to, you know, people are just going to play defensively. If you're going command center first every game, well, people are just going to attack you. So um, I think this is a really smart planning move here uh, from Rush. I don't know if that was the build he was always going to do on the map or if he did that uh, as a response to the nine pool aggro play from Sulky. But uh, whatever prompted it, it worked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, good build order choice there by Rush, and he gets that huge advantage. The game didn't look hard for him at all. And, you know, that's the real trick to winning at StarCraft is making the game easy for yourself because it's such a hard game. Uh, Sulky going to be a little bit upset about that, but I think he's got a strong enough mentality. We've seen it before. He can, he can make comebacks, but if he loses map three, it's going to be hard. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we come back, Sulky tries his comeback. Pension, Guess the
뭐 지금 당장은 사실 우승이 목표고요. 사실 우승 말고는 지금 떠오르지가 않아요. 머릿속에 지금 우승해야겠다. 우승, 우승밖에 머릿속에 안 있어가지고 꼭 우승하겠습니다. 차가 아니라면은 하고 싶은 게 없어요. 기회가 되면은 그래도 저는 힘 남. 힘든 상대라고 생각해요. 테란 중에서 이제 제일 잘한다고 생각을 하니까 어려운 상대라고 생각해요. 4강에서는 더 좋은 컨디션으로 더 좋은 경기 보여드리겠습니다. 잠시나 어차피 너 준우승 하잖아. 내가 올라갈게. 텐션 텐션 Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for waiting. Um, we're about to be going into game three here, and maybe what Artosis was saying earlier on is going to come true. <laughs> if there's one player that seems to be able to reverse a situation um, in, in a series at Soul Key, we saw it in StarCraft II GSL Finals versus Innovation, one of the only reverse sweeps in the best of seven ever. Uh, we saw him just do it versus JYJ down two games and comes back three and here he is now um but uh yeah i mean if anybody could do it it would be sulky uh, on the other hand rush is just making this look easy artosis yeah yeah he really is he's choosing some pretty good builds he's playing some solid games uh and i mean map three being apocalypse honestly i thought he would probably choose this as his first map there's some issues here for zerg like the third base that they give you is not takeable in zerg versus terran uh, you know, for, for Terran, once you gain map control, you're going to have, like, a high ground containment. It's, like, already hard enough to push out of your natural Zerg against Marine Medic Science Vessel, but having that high ground makes it even harder. Uh, you know, there are some, some things that you get for Zerg here, like good Mutalisk harassment at the naturals, but this seems like a very hard map for Soul Key, and I'm not sure what he's going to do to try to deal with it. Soul Key uh, really just got punished for going for, uh, with a generic build, um, whereas Rush went for a super greedy build. And then Rush was basically able to just move out on the map and overpower Solkia. You know, there's not a whole lot else to say about that game. I also think the um, the, the third base, he does seem to want to be sneaky with his third bases. I, I want to watch out for that in the next few games that we have. Uh, if we have, you know, many more games, hopefully we do. I hope this is not going to be one-sided. That would be a bummer with how hyped everybody was for these two. Going head-to-head -head here. But, um, I mean, Rush is kind of looking flawless, Artosis. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's looking he's looking super strong. He's come very prepared. He's very motivated right now. He wants to be a champion. Of course, <laughs> Sulky wants that too. But Rush, has. you can see the focus in him. And it, it, it's been there for years now. So let's see if he can get that match point here. Go up 3-0 to zero on Apocalypse. Okay, into game three we go. Rush in the bottom right, uh, and Sulky up here in the top center. It's the three-player map. Um, you know, it's a map we're still trying to learn about uh, and unpack, um, as it's one of the newer maps that we've got here in the ASL. And I'm, I'm really grateful that we also got all these ASL maps in the actual ladder map pool. We've had a lot of seasons where there's like the ASL maps and then the maps the common man plays on. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and, you know, I always think StarCraft's in its best state when you have um, you, you have the pro maps, uh, the pro matches being played, and then on ladder in, in local tournaments, you can also have mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, the fans watch those games and then come on and, and play and try the strategies out that they learn from there. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think uh, the the ladder scene, like mirroring the the pro scene, it's like you can try out the strats that you just saw. You know, you've, you you gain familiarity with the maps without even playing them. You know, if you're not like a full time player, which so few people are, like this, I feel like this helps you and, and kind of encourages you to get on that ladder. So, uh, big props to uh, to Blizzard for putting 
you know this this set of maps in. Do you like this map, by the way? Just just wondering. I haven't talked to you about Apocalypse and and your experiences uh, on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, I'm still trying to get a handle on it. Uh, I think one thing about this map that that's kind of funny is is the um, the very center area. It's, mm. it's very open. I mean, you obviously have the low ground and the high ground ground, but I've already seen some very cool tricks from pros uh, maneuvering around the overlords <laughs> because this map is not. Uh, as boxy as some of the other ones. Mm. But um, I think it's a welcome map. I also think, and I've said this before in other casts, but this is a map that is more in the realm of sanity. I like having crazy maps, but occasionally <laughs> a, a map maker that has one crazy idea also has like 12 other crazy ideas. Yeah, and yeah. That, I'm, not to say that it makes the map unplayable, but it makes the map so out there. Mm -hmm. And this was really like ASL, I'd say like three or four years ago. We went through some phase, maybe even five years ago, where we had a couple maps that were cool, but there was almost too much. Yeah. And and it, it seemed like even at the very, very end of the map's life cycle, the pros had either barely figured it out or not really <laughs> figured it out, yeah, or, yeah. Or, or, or they had developed some kind of a weird gimmick <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they would do on the map um, instead of having a proper game. And so I'm glad that we have maps like this that everybody can play on but have some cool ideas. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's just another one of the great new maps in StarCraft. Yeah, I Inner Coven, Sparkle, and, you know, so many others have been have been pretty wild. This season we don't really have a crazy map when you think about it. it, it Nemesis is probably our weirdest, but Nemesis has been around for so long that I, it doesn't even feel that weird anymore because everyone has a lot of experience on it, so... Yeah, I, this is one of the more vanilla seasons as far as maps go, isn't it? Maybe La, La, La Campanella, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that one's a little bit weird. It's a little bit, but it's not like <coughs> super me. duper insane. I guess it is in that outsider genre, along with Nemesis of these these weird ringed bases that are very hard to get to. So I guess so, but definitely not as crazy as some of the other seasons that you were pointing out. What, what I would like to see <laughs> is um, maybe a, a, a map that is. An island or, 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 or a semi-island that then was also just normal. I think one of the mistakes that's been made in ASL maps um, previously is that it was like an island map that was also completely insane and had like permanent disruption webs all over the map uh, mm -hmm. or, or, or the whole areas uh, locked out by, you know, lurker eggs or, or zerg eggs or whatever you want to call them. Um, and I think that, like, it would be fun to maybe go back to some island-ish maps. Mm -hmm. Maybe, like, you start out on an island or you have a natural and that's it. And then and then from there, it's just a land map. Stuff like that. Sure. If we were to go back on, onto wackier maps. But, you know, maps like Sparkle, uh, Inner Coven. 76. Uh, as an example. <laughs> yeah, 76, where it's like, okay, I, I understand that once you get one fun idea, you, want, you start to have a whole lot more. But I think mm -hmm. if you can kind of just spoon feed these ideas back map by map, and we, because and what, what you, well, hold on a second. We have a huge link rush mm. coming in here right now. And um, oh my and God. Bunker's going down. <laughs> yeah, Sulky might be able to break through everything here. The SCVs come out for a pretty darn good block. More links are coming, but I don't know if he's going to have quite enough to break through here. Not like, like I was saying, right? Like I didn't know how Sulky would try to play this because it seems like it's Terran favored. And you can see he's decided, okay, we're just going to do a Zergling all-in. Uh, but it doesn't seem like it's working. This feels very rush-favored right now. Yeah, well, I mean, all when you're experiencing an attack like this, uh, you know, as a Terran, you know that all you have to do is live through it. And the, the victory is going to be once the dust settles. Uh, Morlings are going to run by. You know, there seems to be just enough Marines back here that I think they can straight up fight this. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's not a situation that's, I think, one that Sulky can really recover from. I, I don't know. You know, you really only have that that burst of damage with the first wave of Zerglings, right? Mm -hmm. the, the rest of the Zerglings weren't doing that much. We have Mutas out. There's not a single drone mining a mineral at the natural. There's only two drones in gas to give you guys some perspective <laughs> here. So, yeah, it's still a two-base Zerg with Mutas, but uh, economically, it's very, very weak. I I have no idea how you're even supposed to plan a comeback here. I think Sulky has no option other than to make a bunch of units and try to just win straight up. Like, I think what he'll do is use these mutas right here, stop reinforcements from going to the natural, bring in lings, and try to bust the bunker. 
I can't I can't think of anything else, you know? It's just like his position is terrible, he has no economy, and Rush is looking on top of it. Yeah, is he just going to go for it? I mean, if you have SCVs to repair, I guess these turrets kind of cage that out. Only one Marine in this bunker, by the way. The bunker does fall, but the only thing he got out of that was that one Marine. It looks like he does have three in his second ga uh, gas geyser. But it just seems like the sand is running out of the hourglass here, man. <laughs> I don't For know sure. what Silky's going to do the further this game goes. I think he's going to GG, man. And, it, like, this is this might be a very disappointing run of four match, unfortunately. Uh, it just this doesn't look like a winnable position against a player of Rush's caliber. You know, it, he, he, Sulky, he, he did it all in. He knows the map is tough. He's, he's trying to, to make something happen here with this kind of like all in play. But Rush's advantage at this point, like there's some things Rush didn't start like a plus one or anything. He's had to skip a couple things, uh, you know, due to having to defend everything. His economy wasn't perfect, but it's so much better than what Sulky has at home. Um, by the way, for the uh, uninitiated, this game might look like, wow, Terran's barely, barely hanging on. What are Tastos just talking about, <laughs> you know, when they say that he's in trouble? You have to realize that there are just no workers being made at home. He actually took those three <laughs> off of the gas and put them on minerals. That's how unstable the economy is. Whereas Terran is just continuing to make Marines. Uh, Terran's squeezing out SCVs when the Terran can, and so... Uh, that's the big issue right now. And it just doesn't seem like Sulky's finding any real substantial damage. I mean, he's basically killing turrets off some Marines, but with the income that Rush has, he just refills that immediately. Yeah, Sulky's doing a pretty good job uh, with this amount of mutas of killing the turrets at the bottom here. So, like, not a, not a bad idea. Goes up and actually kills off the uh, SCV making the factory, so going to slow that tech slightly at least. Uh, which is important because, like, if a Valkyrie comes out, he's going to be forced out of the game. Uh, you know, there's not going to be literally anything left for his pure mutilist play. And, you know, he's got this group in, like, a very interesting position for harassment. It's it's hard to get up there and push that back. Looks like the mutas are going to continue to do, you know, some pot shots here and there. I got to say, he is starting to get some actual important kills here with the uh, CVs. This is starting to show a little bit more promise. It almost seems like Sulky has willed his way back into this. He has gone back on to making drones. And so he is getting a, a, a better economy, but that means he wasn't making attacking units. This is the punishing thing about two hatchery play mm -hmm. when you're locked into it. He does have that um, air uh, damage upgrade for the Mutalisks. He is gonna come through here and chip away at these turrets. One thing about the map apocalypse is that uh, it, drops are devastating, but the same is true for Mutalist Caress. You have just such a massive opening inside of your main base. Uh, and so there's so many different angles the Mutas can come in and try to hit you at. Uh, the Marines move out, and then we see, I think it was actually four, yeah, four creep colonies go down. Well, never mind that. He sees the Marines huh. are backed up, so he cancels <laughs> three of them, keeping one. Smart move there. Yeah, Sulky is really pushing to come back in this game, and He's actually done such a good job of denying the bottom of this base, Tasteless. I wonder if this is going to start to go towards his favor, but I do still feel like Rush is is okay. Uh, you see his armory is almost finished. He has his starport. And like I mentioned before, once you start getting some Valkyries out, these plus one attack Mutalisks are going to melt. Yeah. Uh, although, let's not forget, this has uh, been some of the worst Valkyrie control in all of StarCraft history for this season of the ASL. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we have seen more Valkyries just get one-shotted than anything else in, in StarCraft. It's been actually a hilarious season in that regard. Uh, hopefully, Russia's control is going to be a little bit better. But, um, look, I, I, Sulky's in a better spot a little bit than, than when we were talking about how bad it was before. But, as Artosis pointed out, you know, the Valkyrie ultimately counters Mutus. Yeah, yeah, as long as you control it, you're right. We've had, like, really terrible Valkyrie micro from most pros, which is weird because, I mean, it is tricky. It is tough to do, but, like, if you practice it, you'll you'll get it. Uh, Hive is on the way as well as a third base for Sulky. It's really impressive what he's pulled together, but don't forget, his, ins his supply is almost totally Mutalisks. So once you start countering that hard with the Valkyries, I mean, this could go very badly very quickly. So you can see that the missiles from the Valkyries 
can slowly chisel down that hit points. Oh my God, Artosis! ASL season 16, he does keep it alive, all right. Yeah, you can't be losing that. It's not worth killing an Overlord. You just, you have to keep it alive. If he gets two or three and keeps it on top of his bio force, Soul Key is going to have less and less options with these mutas, but with some lurkers fielded now, and you know, he, when you go Valkyrie, you don't have science vessels, he might just walk over these. <gasps> Tasteless. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> I can't even believe what I'm looking at. I cannot even believe it. Game one, Solky had a big lead, ended up losing. Game two, we called him dead several times, and we were right, Tasteless. But he's going to win this game. Yeah. That hold, that's it. That hold position lurker play. Oh, my God. Just completely won him the game. Right when it looked like, you know, there was just no way to stop this, uh, this push that would inevitably, inevitably, excuse me, crush Solky. He does a beautiful hold position lurker setup gets out there obliterates the entire army that rush had built up to win the game comes through gets into the natural uh, uh, the natural and that is that and look at the concerned look on rush's face he's thinking my god i was about to be 3-0 <laughs> yeah that's a rough now one he has got a shot yeah and that's that's a great map for for tvz in a lot of ways like i i see why sulky went for the all-in dude he made so many zerglings it didn't really do much and then, remember when he had only three drones in his natural? Oh my god, I can't believe he won that. Just an unbelievable game out of Sulky to come back. He really, he kept his mental tasteless, is I think the way you say it. <laughs> um, okay, well, thank god. Sulky wins the game. We've got ourselves a series now. Um, can Sulky even it out, or is Rush going to steal back that next win and be that much closer to closing it out? Uh, and again, you know, Sulky is, I feel like he's the only player that can do a crazy all-in like that and then somehow get into the tech to actually fight a macro conservative Terran. I really don't get how he does it, but if you've watched a lot of Sulky games, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, he really, he even utilized like one Zergling in there to harass the bottom turrets and force the Marines to move around so he could pick off more. It was insane. Like he used every, literally every single thing he had he was putting to its maximum usage to fight back into that game. That is a scary it, Zerg right there. Even seeing the um, the one player, uh, the, the, the one uh, moment where the three drones were taken off the gas onto minerals, then put back on the gas. Like he, he's, he's really doing a, a crazy balancing act back at home um, in order to, to get out whatever he needs. And uh, Rush, you know, he's got to be careful because Sulky could start to catch up here. Yeah, it's, it's a real thing. Uh, after winning a game like that, the momentum may even go towards Sulky's favor. Uh, I believe his second map is Tempest as well, which is and should be a little bit Zerg favored in this matchup. So that could be a tough one for Rush. I'm not sure how he's going to try to approach it, uh, but definitely a, a, a good map for Zerg versus Terran. Uh, I think we might be going right into the next game. Um, oh, okay. I guess we're going to have you on, on camera. <laughs> just, while just I caught talk, off guard there. there. This is where I, I'm going to have a long, drawn-out analysis piece where Artosis <laughs> just stares in the camera. We should actually get a sock puppet to use or something. I like know. That to, to... Seriously, a tasteless sock puppet. I'll just draw a beard onto a white sock. <laughs> That's about all. <laughs> I can put my other headset onto it as well so it really looks like you. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I, that was funny. I had like my legs up on my desk. And I see them jump on camera like, oh, damn, I got to press the button, get myself on here. Uh, <laughs> but look, this has been a, a really interesting series. It's, it's strange because like I would have swapped the winners of games one and three, right? Like, it would be going yeah. exactly how we expected if game one Sulky had won and game three Russian won and we we're in the same map score. But it would make more sense, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's been funny because, with the exception of game two, which is honestly about as straightforward as as you could ask it to be, uh, what happens in the early game seems to be inconsequential to what happens in the later part of the game for both game one and game three. Game one, the nine pool comes in, it does so much damage. It should be a pretty easy layup for the Zerg to just close it out. Instead, uh, somehow Rush overcomes all odds, pushes out, smashes the bottom left position, and then mm -hmm. pushes into the. Uh, the natural uh, where there's nothing Sulky can do. And then in game two, it's a Ling all in. And I mean, 
it's funny. We're not wrong for saying that from the Terrence perspective, all you have to do is not die mm -hmm. to those lings, and you should have a pretty easy game. That's how a lot of StarCraft games are won, is you're surviving an all-in, you're surviving a timing attack, and because you played a more standard, well-rounded uh, game of getting upgrades, getting your tech out, you should be fine. Yeah. But instead, Sulky does a crazy uh, hold position lurker tactic and closes it out. Yeah, that, that was amazing. And uh, honestly, I think it, a lot of the game was also, the way he came back and was able to get the hold position was that bottom right harassment below the command center. But enough talk of that. We're getting ready into game number four on Tempest. All right, we're into it. Rush in the bottom left, Soul Key in the bottom right. Um, this is a, a map that, you know, I, as far as TVZ goes, I, I don't know as much about. Uh, what can you tell us about this matchup and, and what we should expect from these two? And is, is, is there one race that's clearly at an advantage or do we know that yet? Yeah, so it is it is a bit Zerg favored. And the main reason behind that is you have a high ground natural so basically when you go uh for like marine medic a big part of playing marine medic against mutalisk is putting your group out in a more forward position on the map so that you can counter attack if the mutas go too wild in your main base okay you don't get that every game but that is a big part of what happens in terran vs Zerg. uh and because it is a high ground natural if they place their sunkens kind of along the diagonal of that ramp uh, you're going to be missing shots or being forced to run through extra shots to get to the high ground. So it's much, much, much harder to threaten a counterattack, right? Like the same amount of Marines that would, would bust three Sunkins, let's say, is not going to bust that many Sunken Colonies, uh, you know, on this map, which means that Zerg can stay longer with their harassment. So, yeah, that's... Because of that, it feels like a hard map for Terran vs. Zerg. Now, not every game comes down to that. You can still play it kind of normally and 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 try to just grind it out. But that is that is something that can be a problem. And you know, that's it, it, we're gonna have to see how Rush wants to try to deal with that. Now, is Mech viable on this map? I, I mentioned we might be seeing Mech. We haven't had any Mech at all. It seems like Rush is really going for that very uh, classic. A Terran uh, composition of, uh, you know, Marine, uh, a science vessel, medic. But, you know, it's a, really a question of how does he get there, not what is he going to get. Um, could we have Rush do some kind of mech play here on this map, or, or is mech viable at all on this map? Well, uh, yeah, actually, I, I like mech on this map, personally. That's what I do on the map, is I go for mech. Uh, you know, we did see JYJ do a straight mech build in Game 5 against Sulky in the round of 8, which he did end up losing. So that might make you look at it and say, well, damn, Sulky's so good against mech, maybe I shouldn't do that. But I think if you're going to go mech against Sulky, you have to do it as a mech switch, where he thinks you're going bio, and then suddenly there's mines everywhere. And suddenly you have four bases and, you know, tanks tanks pushing in. So uh, I think that that's, that's, like, the type that you would have to go for. Would Rush do that? He's really a bio player. So I don't, Wait, I this... don't think he'll do it. That, so, sorry, what is the structure at the bottom? Is that yeah, a command center? That's a command center. So what's okay, happening okay. here is Rush is playing to the map's image, right? So everything I just said about that, where like you might you might not want to play like a standard marine medic game, right? Like you might you might want to go for like uh, you know a one 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 or you know possibly mech, possibly mech, maybe one of these hybrid Goliath bio builds, whatever it might be. So he's walled in. And he's building the command center out of vision of the drone. And that's going to force Sulky to say, okay, it's a factory. We're going to make a sunken colony. You know, we're going to play defensively, maybe get a hydralisk den. Uh, because here you're definitely thinking that there is a very high possibility uh, that this is not bio. Because, you know, it's just your economy is much worse by having the command center in your main base. And then you have to float it out. You're losing like two SCV build cycles and mining time by doing that. 
Yeah, it looks like he's gonna just chase this SCV down. Still a confusing opening right now for Sulky. Sulky basically thinks that something's coming. There's some kind of weird tech, but this is basically a um, hidden command center that will be floated out later after the Zerg may have overreacted to a, t a tech that's just not coming. Exactly, so exactly. So if, if you're watching this, you're going, well, why wouldn't you just make the command center out there like the Terran did in every other game? Well, it's because it, it, it this, the way that this looks from the outside, trying to look in at that Terran wall in and not seeing much, you might think that this is like one base uh, into tech or uh, I don't know, some other kind of weird cheese. And so you do get your expansion up later, but this may have caused a lot of disruptions mm -hmm. tech wise back at home. But honestly, looking at Sulky's base back at home, it doesn't seem like it's that bad. He's actually going to make a ton of links. <laughs> this is kind of cute, actually. Yeah, he, he already <laughs> had the speedlings. I think he was looking for maybe a vulture. Of kill the vultures, it comes out, something like that. But now he's made so many. Look at this, he's drawing the Marines. Now that is a tell, and Rush moves into the mineral line. Here we go, the SCVs are gonna try to get out, but they actually are kind of glitching. And he goes down, targeting down some medics now with these lings. But I think Rush is gonna hold without too much of a problem, right? Yeah, I almost feel like he could have gone in and attacked those Marines and done a little bit more damage, but, you know, things are happening so quickly. Two more Lings are going to come in and continue to hit these SCVs over at the Natural. Sulky just playing a game of keep away. Um, finally, most of these Zerglings are going to be cleaned up as the rest are going to escape back out uh, into safety. You know, that was really supposed to, you know, ideally kill off uh, Rush in that moment, but Rush was very smart. He stimmed and he darted into the mineral line. And those SCVs, whether they're attacking or not, become obstacles the Zerglings have to mm -hmm. get around. Now there's Mutas inbound. It does seem like the turrets are pretty late. Let's see what the Mutas can do. Yeah, yeah. J just to mention, compared to the Apocalypse game, he has four drones as natural instead of three. So Sulky in a much better position in that game. Uh, but still a very tough one. Some Lings running by here. They're going to try to stall out turrets, I think. Uh, maybe be able to target down this one in the main base. The Mutas trying to fly in, but it seems like they are going to be killed off. Like the Marines and Medics are coming down. They're supporting. And again, we're in this position where Sulky has tried to cheese and it hasn't worked out. Okay, another big attack um, up here for the, the Zerg. And, you know, I mean, it does seem like Rush has, has pretty much sealed this off. He is going to go for this eBay. I mean, look, he doesn't expect to kill the eBay, but he knows he has to threaten that in order to try to draw the, uh, the Marines out. But now the Marines are high enough in numbers that the Mutas can't even uh, engage with him. And... I don't know, man. I mean, I feel like this game is looking pretty good right now for Rush. Again, yeah. Like, totally good for Rush. He's adding a, a couple more barracks on there. This is actually an easier main base to defend than Apocalypse. Uh, so there's that for Rush as well. Sulky, though, let's see if he can make his magic work here. It, feel, it feels like he is definitely on the back foot. Uh, he is droning up a little bit quicker. So, again, it's actually not quite as bad as Apocalypse, but still a bad position. Well, he's going to come in again and start to really hammer down these turrets. And uh, I don't see the Marines coming back. It seems like Rush is just going to go with a full-on counterattack, Artosis. Yeah, he is doing exactly what we were talking about before, but the Sunkins might be slightly late from Sulky. He does leave the base, and that's based on the Marines not coming back. Oh, my God, he actually goes back in. So he's kind of risky. He's saying, you know what? I'm going to hold this without my Mutas. And if he does, if he doesn't take drone damage here, he's going to be in a great spot. I mean, we're about to have those other Sunken Colonies finish up. You can see the Marines spill in now. The drones are being pulled here to try to defend. Uh, they are body blocking these Sunken Colonies. It just doesn't quite feel like there's ever enough out here. Each medic is healing uh, each Marine nicely. Sulky survives that. And I got to say, this is a little bit awkward right now for Rush. Uh, it seems like he thought he had an opportunity, and now... His base is in shambles. Remember that eBay I was talking about earlier, Artosis? Mm -hmm. He might be able to get that now after he changes <laughs> these SCVs out. Yeah, maybe you're right about that. And his mutas with no turret defense in here, like his mutas are doing serious work. That's exactly the position, by the way, that I mentioned. If that was all flat ground, Rush would have ended up breaking that. Uh, so a huge oh, yeah. difference. And now Sulky's going to win based off of that one thing, the raised high ground natural, stopping the counterattack of Marines. A great call there from Sulky, and now he's so far ahead, Rush might GG. Yeah, I mean, Rush, it was a bad call. 
he got a little bit uh, too impulsive. That you know, that's never a calculated move. There's no game where you go, well, when he does his muta attack to me, I'll run across the map. He had a couple seconds to analyze the situation. He knew that um, you know, a lot of Zergs might overestimate the high ground advantage, and maybe he can get a bust. Mm -hmm. And man, did it totally backfire! Wow, Sulky ties it up two to two, winning a couple of games where his initial Zerglings don't really do anything, and he gets behind. Uh, but showing that strength of will that he possesses. Beautiful uh, Mutalist harassment. And yeah, Rush Rush did misjudge what he could bust there going uphill. And, you know, he's going to be regretting that one. Oh, man, you could see it too. Muttering to himself after that loss. I mean, he was about to 3 0 just a little bit ago. Then that whole position lurker, that was, that was the complete turning point was when the, the whole position lurker uh, move was pulled off there in game three. Mm -hmm. Sulky's now tied up two to two. Maybe he's even going to be able to take this to a third win, Artosis. <laughs> he's got the tempo advantage. If you look at them, like Sulky after each game that he lost, did seem a little bit annoyed with what how the game had gone down. But I just saw that look on Rush's face as you did as well. And he, he looks a little bit sad about his position. This feels like a series that should be over already. Like, he came back in game one, he was ahead in game three, he was ahead in game four, and now it's tied up two to two. Yeah, I mean, this is this is getting very interesting. I'm glad that we're getting a longer series here. For a little bit, it looked like this was just gonna be Rush, you know, having Zerg for dinner, but instead, Sulky's coming back, he's looking really strong. Um, also, you know, we're not having as many, oh, oh, we'll be right back. <laughs> Pension, Silsongside, 패치를 만들어 주세요. 우선 이벤트 게시물에 들어가서 이벤트 참여 댓글을 남긴 다음에 플레이어 하단의 버튼으로 패치를 만들거나 60초 이내 새로운 영상을 업로드하면 성공. 두 번째 이벤트 패치를 신나게 즐겨 주세요. 이번에도 마찬가지로 이벤트 참여 댓글을 남기고 아프리카 TV에서 패치를 시청하기만 하면 성공. 추석 특집 아프리카 TV 패치 이벤트 지금 참여하세요. 
Welcome back, everybody. This season, uh, sorry, this uh, match here in this ASL is going to continue on here. It is Rush versus Sulky now tied up. It started out looking like it was going to be very one-sided and maybe a little bit disappointing, maybe a little bit too short. Um, instead, now it's it could be anybody taking this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was completely on the same page as you, like a couple minutes into Apocalypse. It's like, well... That's too bad. Some, but sometimes you still have a good finals if it's a one-sided round of four. Uh, but here, this couldn't be closer. And it does feel like Sulky's starting to gain a bit of an advantage. Uh, he's won from two poor positions. Uh, obviously, he got completely rolled in Invader. Uh, but, you know, game one, he had an advantage himself. And although he did kind of squander that, in my mind right now, I'm watching this, I feel like Sulky is playing better StarCraft than Rush. Well, I mean, it's that it's that sulky magic where he's always able to um, concoct a win, no matter what the situation, um, and he's always able to find an advantage. <laughs> um, we're actually, I believe, ready to go right into game number three now, guys. Let's. I'm oh, sorry, um, game number. I can't. My brain's not working. Our toes. What is this? <laughs> game number five. Numbers are hard, apparently. Uh, while I've been doing this whole intro, my cat is on my desk trying to walk on the keyboard and stop this recording from happening. So I'm like, I'm a little all over the... What you guys don't see is I'm actually f I'm fighting a whole other battle right now to try to do this. Artosis, can you open this up while I move my cat off the no, table? No problem, Tasteless. So in the bottom left, we have Tasteless. And in the top right, we have his cat trying to turn off his sound. Uh... But yeah, we're on Campanella. Cross spawns here between Sulky and Rush. A very important game because whoever wins here is going to have that match point advantage, right? You go up to three wins and you have two more tries to just win the series and go to the finals. So this is a map that's always going to create a game that you can't really have on any other maps because you have these isolated areas. Um, you know, these, this little pathway that you have behind your minerals uh, that you can take to another base. And these bases oftentimes can be, um, you know, shot at, uh, even with just Marines uh, over, over from the high mm -hmm. ground to the low ground to hit that. So you have these like bases that are isolated, but can still be accessed somewhat in the middle of the map. Um, it does seem to lead to some pretty long games, TVZ. Yeah, we have seen that quite a bit. Uh... It's, it's quite the interesting map design because a lot of times when you have those hidden bases, you can't really interact with them without maybe like flying units or maybe a drop ship, something like that. Uh, but, it, you know, in this case, since you can hit the gas from outside with Marines or, or siege tank them, it's like there's a lot more play, I guess. And the map doesn't feel bad at all for, for Terran versus Zerg, honestly. Um, I like the more that I watch the map, the more that I play the map, I almost feel like it's going towards Terran, even against Protoss. Even though we've seen some killer mm. PVTs here, it feels like it's not actually that bad because you can siege those bases. Uh, but yeah, either way, we have it looks like an eight racks opener here from Rush. So he's going to send out double scouts, but it's cross spawn. So the odds of getting any real damage here are very low. Yeah, this is one where if the Zerg does the same build, but it's closer, you have a, a two out of three chance, um, you know, as, as you open up on a four player map of maybe doing some some good damage. But I think Sully is going to be fine here. One thing about this build from Terran is that if you don't get in there and do a ton of damage right away, it's not necessarily the end of the world. Yeah, you could always go back and, and try to make something else work. It's it, honestly, Arax is a crazy build right now because it like it, it doesn't feel greatly behind against anything. Like, let's say that Sulky blocks this perfectly, right? It's like, okay, you're slightly behind, but definitely playable. Like, a better position than when Sulky loses all of his lings in, you know, a circling rush. Uh, so, he brings out a lot of drones. This is generally the way people are doing it. That's actually not as many drones as I normally see. I normally see seven or eight out here hunting. But these are going around trying to catch reinforcements. And really what they're doing is forcing the Marines to run around uh, and not... You know, the rings aren't really attacking. They're not getting any damage yet. Yeah, uh, and the bunker's been delayed at least for just a second here. Um, the lings are going to come out now, and there's just no way to salvage this position here. The drones come back, and I think he gets, what, one kill? Whoa, two kills. That's actually <laughs> a bit of a shock. Yeah, that was I a little that, bit sloppy, that, wasn't it? Like, he didn't have to bring those back right then. No, I, it, it almost seemed like... Um, 
he was looking at the situation and thought, okay, it's done, I've won, and sent him back. And, and the truth is, you're looking for about two drone kills or more, if you can, mm -hmm. as Terran. So it, weirdly, it's like the rush was held, and then in a sloppy, uh, you know, move for to have the workers return back home, he actually got himself into the position. That's exactly what the Terran wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> it looked like it was a perfect block. And, uh, you know, I look at this position, I feel like this is pretty even, right? It, like, it took a while to do that. He did lose, like, a couple SCVs in there. He had to cancel his bunker. Yeah, he got the two drones, but Sulky didn't lose as much mining time as we normally see as well. So, like, I, I'm kind of valuing this personally, looking at it, like, about even. Uh, but, yeah, if Sulky had, had dodged with those drones, had just brought them back at a different angle or waited an, an extra few seconds, then this would feel a lot better for him right now. The SCV is still continuing to scout around uh, for the time being. And, um, you know, it's funny. I, I thought we were going to have a, a very kind of crazy range of games with these two. Oh, he almost got it behind the minerals. That would be sick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, it didn't even occur to me. That's that's actually a pretty cool trick if you could somehow just get that guy, um, you know, jumped over the, the worker line. And then you could basically, basically confirm if they ever take a hatchery there. Um, but to what I was saying before, you know, it seems like we're going to have a lot of the same games over and over again uh, here. I mean, this map is different, so it, it will fundamentally, in some ways, not look like the last games. But I thought we might have some more weird, I don't know, lurker tech, or, you, you know, Artosis mm -hmm. was mentioning Crazy Zerg. Um, and I I was talking about mecking from, from Terran. Mm -hmm. Instead, uh, it's really been kind of classic TVZ mid-game play. Uh, Ling... Um, Yuta into Lurker, and then Terran just trying to, to push out on the map with a, a number of Marines and Medics, and eventually Tech and Vessels. Yeah, yeah, like, mm, I, 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 we saw JYJ go for the Mac here, right? Like, this was the map he went right. against Soul King. He said, you know what, we're going to go Mac, Mass turrets in the center. It was very cool. It was a very new style of Mac. Rush, I think, is not willing to deviate from Marine Medic. Like, it feels like he's playing yeah. a little bit one-dimensionally, which kind of makes sense because he's really powerful at this type of play. But it's becoming a bit predictable. So I feel like Solky may start to to play counter to that, right? Now, what that may mean in Solky's mind is anyone's guess. This guy definitely thinks about the game differently from other players. Uh, but I would like to see a little bit of that creativity here. He is throwing down, you know, triple sunk in here, so this is not going to bother him at all. Uh, and he is going for mutas on the three bases. But is Rush going to be able to harass that third base? That is the big question. I like the Lings just coming in here to try to do some damage. Just do a, an honesty check here on the Terran. Do you actually have enough at home? Um, and it looks like he does. Sulky just... Yeah, yeah, it's so crazy <laughs> watching him go back and forth against that fire bat like that. It's like, is he going to do this or not? Then eventually he comes in there for the dive, showing that he's not bluffing. Mm -hmm. that, it's kind of funny. He does get the fire bat, which is nice. Uh, but, like, the way he's doing it, it's almost like he's checking. Are you looking at this? Are you are you paying attention? Can I get that? Because if Rush does one extra click, that doesn't work, right? He loses everything. Uh, but the Muta's coming across the map right now. Rush has, once again, gone for four barracks play. So he is really relying on very heavy Marine Medic counts. Uh, the Muta's coming in and are going to start dogging this army immediately. Fourth Sunken Colony is being set up right now. Um, we have a, a, ver a much earlier third gas, by the way, yeah, um, it, because he took this uh, this little, uh, what do you want to call this? Like, I guess it's like an island base. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> uh, the three o'clock base <laughs> over here. And... Um, you know, I think we could see him go harder and harder into mutas. I do think, and correct me if I'm wrong with this, Artosis. Mm -hmm. Tell me if this is fair. I think Sulky goes for greater Spire tech more than any other Zerg I can think of, maybe except for Shine. Yeah, there's there's a couple of the lower-ranked pros that go for it a little bit more, like Zealot, but you're certainly right. Sulky is not afraid of using Guardians in this matchup. In fact, even against Protoss, I've seen him use Guardians. So, uh, yeah, maybe maybe he could go for something like that. It seems like that like would be, you know, like Guardian Rush could be a very good strat for a map like this. But I think it's already not that because it feels like a little bit too slow, doesn't it? Like, you have to get a right. very think... fast hive to make Guardian Rush work. 
Yeah, I think you might be right, but just an idea uh, mm. to put out there. This is a map that would uh, probably complement Guardians. You have, as you can see, the Muta's flying over this high ground area. You're you're surrounded uh, as a Terran player by positions where Guardians can threaten you. Yeah. Um, it's funny, too, because, you know, Guardians, when the game first came out, they were sort of looked at as a super unit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, kind of like carriers or, uh, uh, I don't know, battle cruisers. You know, it was like, wow, well, this is kind of the end game unit Zerg is going to get. And as competitive games developed more and more, they became kind of an uh, an obtuse weird unit that's not, it's not bad, but it's not great either. Yeah. It, it's really one of the more circumstantial units in the game. It's not something like the scout, which is almost just like, you know, you have to be in either the most unique situation ever for this to make mm -hmm. sense, or you're trying to humiliate somebody. The Guardian, yeah. uh, it, it has its moments, and we'll see if it actually is going to have uh, one here in this match it, as well. Yeah, I think the Guardian's mostly... It went out of style because people got good at macro. Like, just Guardians die to, like, a lot of units, right? Anything that you have a lot of, Marines, Goliaths, Wraiths, like, anything is going to kill them. Uh, but, you know, with some of these sharper timings, they can work. This game doesn't seem like he's going to try for that. Maybe maybe later on we have seen him add even later game Guardians like we saw against uh, JYJ. But here he is. He's setting up his Lurker Eggs. He's got a good amount of Sunkins. That is a ton of Marines and Medics, though, stimming forward, trying to take everything out, and the Lurkers are just not ready. That execution uh, uh, was so good. I mean, it looks like uh, Sulky is clearly going to live um, to keep that base up, but the way that he stimmed and then one right-click, two right-click, three right-click into that... The eggs for the Lurkers, by the way, are there to basically draw a couple shots away and mess up the pathing, but that was an almost perfect execution there from Rush. Rush not expecting to win the game there, but to, to completely uh, break down some of the defenses, trade that out, and then escape back out. Yeah. Really, really clean execution. It's it's kind of wild. It, yeah, it, go ahead. It, it looks like it looks like very big, especially if you play StarCraft II, you would look at that and be like, yeah, I mean, he stimmed, right-clicked forward and then, you know, attack the Sunken Colonies. But to do that in Brood War, when you, you have to have all those units on control groups like that, like, you know, when you guys are watching this on YouTube, go back and look at how literally it looked like that was StarCraft II. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. UI in StarCraft One. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. he, he controlled it very, very well. And honestly, if the Mutas hadn't been there and been microed so frantically from Solki, he could have ended up, like, killing... Uh, you know, killing him there maybe, right? As he just have such a big group of Marines, maybe he scans when the Lurkers come out. But uh, here you see Sulky has some great defense of that geyser. He has burrowed a Lurker underneath the geyser plus Overlord. Plus he has a Sunk in there. So you can't really harass the gas like we were talking about before. Uh, and this looks like it's just going to turn into like a regular macro game. And by the way, look at that Overlord. It's... Hovering over the Lurkers, that's so you cannot irradiate the Lurkers. You would have to irradiate the Overlord yeah. first. And the Marines can't attack the Overlord because the Lurker will just kill them. So, like, it makes it much harder to break through Zerg. These types of new things have been happening uh, for a few years now, at least, or maybe even more than that, but uh, really make it a lot harder for the science vessels to do their job. Yeah, it's a really cool uh, unintended thing you can do in a 2D, not not 2D, what, 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 do, what do you call this? Is it, We call this like a 2D RTS. It's yeah. Like Age of the, Empires 2. I think this one's like 2D. Age of Empires 4 and, and, and StarCraft 2 are like 3D RTSs, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, or I think you called them like 2.5D before because it's like kind of has the top-down view, but it is it is like you can actually uh, kind of look around things. That's, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's Day 9 that said that. Oh, I just okay. stole that. I, um, I can't tell you guys apart anyways. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, but, like, in a game like this where it's 2.5D, there's no way to, like, turn the camera to get under the Overlord. So you can just put something stacked on top, and mm. there's nothing you can do to click under it. Yeah, here he's trying to put on the uh, pressure with the vessels, but you can see it's like, well, do I irradiate the Overlord? Do I just irradiate nothing? Am I saving my energy? What are what are we going to do? Now, he did just start spitting on that, on that uh, factory. I'm guessing he's preparing Siege. Like, I think he might go into heavy siege tanks here, assuming that Solky's late game will turn into uh, a Hydra Lurker Defiler style. 
because that is oftentimes what uh, Sulky likes to go for in the late game. But we haven't seen that yet from him. Oh, is he going to get this? No, good save at the last second. Um, the Lurkers put up in this position with the Defiler over here is going to give um, the drone access to make the hatchery. Oh, hold on. There's actually Marines up there? Yeah. Oh. yeah okay. <laughs> Kills the drone uh -oh. that comes up. That actually slows him down a lot from that fourth base, too. That's a really good move from Rush. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, uh, Zerg and Protoss especially, like, if you can ever stop the worker that's on the way to make the important building, like, you know, the hatchery, the nexus, you get so much further behind. But it seems like Sulky's position to even grow out to these bases that are supposed to be kind of given to him for free. He's having a hard time gaining ground here. I mean, look at the mini map. Mm -hmm. Look how much red there is just sort of out um, laying siege to the Zerg in this position where it's just hard for the Zerg to even grow anywhere. This is going to be a tough game for Sulky to, to grind through, but he is going for that Lurker Hydra Defiler composition where he's going to be grinding with plagues like that, holding positions with Dark Swarm. There's two factories up for Rush, so he is going to be adding in a lot of siege tanks. But this is, my guess right now is this is going to be our biggest macro game, like much bigger than the Polypoid game. You know, the Polypoid game did go up to like 21 minutes or so, but this, I, like, it's going to be really hard for them to kill each other. You know, mass siege tanks is hard to kill, and then Hydra Lurker to Filer, you almost just have to make them mine out of their gas. There's there's almost no way to kill them. They just get so many defilers. Yeah, I think you're probably right about the game length. I think this is probably going to be our our big epic game. It's it cross spawns. It's hard for either side to finish the other one off. I do want to point out that um, it's going to be really tough for Terran to ever take nine o'clock. And it's also going to be tough for Terran to ever take six o'clock. So I'm, I'm watching that bottom right main or top left main or, you know, the, the, those quadrants on the map to see if there's going to be action for the Terran there. Yeah, we actually saw he was trying to take nine and the, the leftover mutas flew in and ruined that for him, which is, is kind of frustrating since those are not that useful right now. Uh, it's not something you expect to screw up one of your bases. Now, he does do a double drop at this fourth base location, but it seems like there's plenty of units uh, to push this back. He's not going to end up losing this hatchery, and that's incredibly important for Sulky. We see the push coming in now. Tank sieging up, and again, this base is very abusable from the main. Uh, it's one of the key central features of this map, but you can see immediately the siege tanks are forced to unsiege. They've got to back up. They've got to reposition. And there's so many hydras and lurkers and, and um, defilers. I mean, what's to say there won't be another dark swarm thrown down there where uh, once again, Sulky can push in and either win the fight or force Rush to back off. Yeah, it, Rush looks very scary right now. He's got a lot of science vessels. He's got those tanks coming out. He has massive map control. But Sulky is on four bases, four gases, and he is going to start shooting up in supply. He is going to have a lot of spells to cast here. Look at that. Runs forward with the Dark Storm, burrows a Lurker, sending those Lings in under the Dark Storms as well, and forcing Rush back. I, you know, it, again, it looks like Rush right now might be winning, but I feel like Sulky's going to take control of this game in the next couple minutes. Yeah, I think it would have helped immensely if he was able to start to deny the gas. Once you kill that extractor, you know, Zerg don't have any way to recover hit points um, or, or remake that extractor very easily. So it's, it, it, you know, it would be a moment where you could start to really bleed them from that important gas tech. But instead, I think Sulky fought back. He's getting control of his side of the main platform here in the middle of the map. Um, but you know, Rush has so much right now. He's almost maxed out. He's just going to go around with an entirely different army. Man, I love this move to try to go up around the fighting that's taking place. If he can kill off the fourth base, then this game is going to become just impossible for Sulky. Well, I've said that a couple times, and it hasn't been. Uh, but Sulky pushing forward again, <laughs> has the Lings, has the Defiler, so I think he will be able to clear this. But look at Rush's macro this game. Dude, he's been above 180 supply for a long time now. No, he really has been. It's uh, it's kind of crazy. And, you know, all he has to do is break one of these positions. And we're getting to the point where there's so many tanks. There's so many vessels. I mean, Zerg is on that fourth gas. So, you you know, you do have a little bit of production there. Um, but Zerg is really getting pushed back over and over and over. 
I, I feel like the very top Terrans are really changing the way that this matchup is played. Just his relentless macro here, and the look at the mini map again. Just red everywhere. He's dropping, he's attacking. There's multiple flanks he's coming in. He's irradiating. His skill, unbelievable here. Almost 400 actions per minute right now. And how is Solky supposed to deal with all of this? I mean, this is kind of crazy, man. Uh, especially with the drop in the main, that's going to pull this out. There we go. The extractor has been, um, you know, it's no longer there at that nine, uh, that three o'clock base. So, I mean, this is becoming a moment where it seems, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like Sulky is so close to breaking. He, yeah. Like yeah. He's barely hanging on. No, it, it looked really good for him for a minute. And now Rush has just gone absolutely mad on the map. He is everywhere at once. Look at this. He's trying to get another base up. He's floated another command center over here. He's doing such a good job of keeping pressure on Sulky that, like, if Sulky's able to stabilize this and come back, he truly deserves to win the ASL. Yeah, I mean... It, 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 the walls are closing in, man. Uh, you know, you're seeing lurkers push out. It's a little bit reminiscent of uh, game one where we saw the lurkers trying to take these fights against these huge numbers of Marines, and in this case, tanks. But, um, you know, as he tries to gain those positions, it's almost like uh, Rush is, is fishing out the, the lurkers, getting those irradiates, killing them off, and we're going to start to see Sulky crumble. Oh, yeah. look at these fire oh, bats. This is insane. Man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't look like that. <laughs> this is, this is, he's like still going, man. Oh, that is. He's already got 11 kills. That's the real fire bat hero right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't think there's much left here. I think Rush has done it, man. And now he's got those mass fire bats that we've seen a few times from him, making these smaller dark swarms uh, a little bit more ineffective. Sulky's trying to re-expand to his old third base. But I mean, as soon as you drop down even one base here against a player of Rush's caliber, it, it doesn't feel good for Zerg. Yeah, no, you, you're right. I mean, uh, by the way, the drone's falling here now. I think we may see Sulky tap out. I mean, he basically doesn't have three o'clock. He now doesn't have that fourth base. There's no drones mining there. You know that the um, gas guys are in the main is mined out, and surely the natural is going to be mined out soon. This is just a brutal game. Yeah, it, it, you know, Rush is, he's trying right now to just finish. He's going after this hatchery. If that hatchery falls, I think, Sulky is just going to GG. Uh, he's still trying to hold on. He's still trying to make a comeback. But, I mean, it, he's he's down 50 supply from what he was at at his peak in this game. And even with some Ultra Tech starting to join the fray, it doesn't feel like it'll ever be enough. Yeah, the Ultras are getting shelled now. I mean, these are the Ultras he was trying to work his way up to. Now they're going to be falling. Or maybe not. Maybe they... Well, <laughs> uh, one's going to get away. But, I mean, this is just a... This is just such an incredible showing here for Rush. A beautiful game after losing a couple that it didn't look like he should lose. Really comes back strong here in La Campanella. Uh, and and Sulky is going to be on his back foot once again in the series after finally making it even. Uh, I think we're just a matter of seconds from that GG. You know, Sulky does not really have any potential left. He's throwing down some decent Dark Swarms. He's got Ultras. It's like, yeah, okay, you can kill these tanks. But Rush's macro is not slowing down. No, it does not look like it is. And, um, you know, even that little window of time where both the bases weren't being mined from, I mean, you could just see that, you know, even though Sulky recovers, which, by the way, he deserves credit for, it's crazy he's still in this game. Mm. It's just that much more momentum here for Rush to eventually crush through and end this. Well, Sulky, I think... You can uh, actually see Sulky muttering to himself. Yeah. <laughs> he knows he's screwed. He's stuck. Yeah. I think... Uh, yep, there he, it is. He's... Yeah. Okay. Okay. So GG is called. And... Well, that's that's going to be Rush going up Artos, three to there? two. Yeah. Tasis, do you hear me? Well, it looks like you might have cut out for a second there. Artos. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, no, I was just... Well, I was speechless, I Tasis. Say, man, that because... was an insane uh, series that we saw... Uh, and we're not done yet. No. I mean, Rush gets that win. He now has the lead. It's going to be up five to, uh, uh, sorry, it's up three to two now. 
Uh, Sulky obviously frustrated. I thought he put up a, a great fight there, but Rush is looking stronger than ever. Yeah, Rush is looking like incredibly good. And, uh, he, you know, I, oh. I thought he was going to be able to take it and he is he's in position now. Uh, and I can hear you loud and clear, Artosis, by the way. You're back okay. on for me. Good stuff. Um, good stuff. So, so um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I was talking about uh, earlier on the uh, extractor and his, you know, if he can shell that with the tanks, he could start to deny um, that. And we saw the fight that was coming down. Uh, it's on the mini map. But then the drop that comes in here now, this pulls all that back. Then the siege tanks get to get set up over here. And, um, you know, I think this was the beginning of this game no longer being even and this suddenly being a rush advantage that he was able to carry on into an inevitable victory. For sure, for sure. Losing losing a gas is the biggest thing that can happen to a Zerg in this matchup, really. Uh, so that was that was a painful moment. Rush's multitasking, his macro, his pressure. It was unbelievable, man. Like, honestly inspiring when you see these top Terrans, the way they can play Terran versus Zerg. Yeah, it's really something else. Um, well, can Sulky possibly even this out? I feel like if there's any player at all of StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2, it would be him. It's going to be on Neo Dark Origin, guys. Short break. We will be right back. Tokens. Silsong 패치를 만들어 주세요. 우선 이벤트 게시물에 들어가서 이벤트 참여 댓글을 남긴 다음에 플레이어 하단의 버튼으로 패치를 만들거나 60초 이내 새로운 영상을 업로드하면 성공. 두 번째 이벤트 패치를 신나게 즐겨 주세요. 이번에도 마찬가지로 이벤트 참여 댓글을 남기고 아프리카 TV에서 캐치를 시청하기만 하면 성공. 추석 특집 아프리카 TV 캐치 이벤트 지금 참여하세요. Welcome back, everybody. We are ready to go now into game number six. And I got to say, this has been a really fun, kind of crazy uh, TVZ series. I thought we were going to have some more longer games like the one we just saw, but instead it's been a lot of very decisive things happening 
um, right in the early mid game that have ended these. Artosis, do you think Sulky can come back and take this, or is Rush just going to run away with this, uh, this uh, best of seven? I keep going back and forth. At the beginning, I th said I thought that Rush was favored here, and then after watching the first four games, I felt like Sulky was favored. And then after watching that one, I'm like, oh, damn, Rush is in great shape now. Uh, like, that was that was an expertly played game. It's it's hard for me to really know because it's been so back and forth, and they both won and lost from positions where they shouldn't have. It really seems like a contest of wills. It's been so fun to see these two duking it out. And again, Solke, I mean, just to go big picture here, guys, you know, he has struggled in ZVZ. It's possible he can make it all the way to this finals, avoiding a decent amount of ZVZs. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Mini might take it tomorrow, uh, and Sulky takes it here, and Sulky could actually come out and take this whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Neo, Neo Dark Origins, where we're going to go here for the um, hopefully second to last map in this series, as Rush for Sulky continues on. Okay, in the upper left here, in the red, we've got Rush. And in the bottom right, in the blue, we have Sulky. Now, if there was any map that would probably force a game to end in mid-game, I feel like it's this map mm. <laughs> in a lot of matchups. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, let's see if this is going to be you know, uh, similar to some of the other games we've seen so far. Yeah, yeah. In if this if this game uh, if this map ends like really early, I think that's definitely a sulky uh, victory. And then, oh, thank you so much, guys. So yeah, nice to you. see some uh, fans in the audience. Hope you I'm guys. Like, are... Oh my God, no more analysis. There's a sign about us. Right, we gotta point that out. Thank you very much. <laughs> you guys are great. And again, thank you everyone who has supported the Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash ASL English. Definitely check it out uh, if you want to support the ASL cast. And we have a big thanks to everyone. Hope you guys are enjoying the uh, faster VOD releases. We're still working on them. And, uh, yeah, I mean, well, we're almost to the end of the season, but we'll continue to improve, we promise, especially going into next yeah, season as well. We, we know that, that uh, there were some audio issues um, or, or audio sync issues, and, and uh, obviously that makes, you know, some of these matches unwatchable if, you know, the sound of us doesn't sync up with the, the actual sound of or, or the image of what's happening in the game. So, um, yeah, we have a system now to release these VODs a little bit quicker. Um, and uh, I think so far people are pretty happy with it. So yeah. thank you for the support, guys. We, we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. We're always looking for ways to improve. I know I'm not on camera. And I know a big part of this show is, you know, people looking at the size <laughs> of my head. And... Um, <laughs> You know, how am I looking that day? Is my lighting right? How red is my face or not red is my face? You know, mm -hmm, it's all mm -hmm. it. It's a very important part of ASL, but we're, we might try to bring that back uh, in the uh, a future season. But for now, we wanted to just get this current yeah. system uh, in, in, set up in a way that's more efficient. So we're still going to be improving down the road. That's right. That's right. So thank you, guys. Now, looking at this game, Rush is trying a command center first. He's dead. It's a nine pool. He is dead. We're going to go to yeah, match this seven. Is over. Um, there is yeah. 0% chance of holding this. So, uh, like, Sulky would... Like, if Sulky was an F-rank Zerg, Rush might be able to hold this. <laughs> like, it, you'd have to really mess up your Zergling AI. The, the SCDs would have to get a surround. But this is exactly what Sulky was looking for. And it looks like Rush's game... You can see him throw his head to the side as his SCV comes out and sees the Lings coming. He'll pull just about every SCV and hope for a miracle engagement. But his barracks is so far off a of done. I think we're going to see GG in a matter of seconds. Yeah. And, you know, these SCVs, they're, he's, the Zerg's able to use the outside of the wallet as kind of a way to just keep punishing. GG, there it is. Um, Sulky taking what would have been a StarCraft game and turning it into a poker game. <laughs> you know, he knew he knew the hand that uh, that Rush wanted to play, and he punished. Yeah, yeah, you know what? It, Rush already went for this on Invader uh, for the Command Center first. He tried to get on Dark Origin. He got a win that looked pretty free on Invader, and he just got a loss that was free on uh, on Dark Origin. So 
uh, you know, that strategy we were talking about, is that a good one to play against Sulky? And Sulky's trying to say no. So this is it, man. We're going to go to to game seven. I got to say, Sulky always brings these great long series. And yeah. he does seem to have better stamina than almost anybody else in a crazy best of seven. Great call there from Sulky while he's behind, identifying that Rush might just take a risk. You know, let's not forget the game that Rush got his command center first off. He just smashed Sulky. It was probably the least memorable game we're going to have in this whole series. <laughs> yeah. But then, you know, uh, Sulky, you know, took the risk. He went for a kind of inconvenient build if it doesn't counter the builder that the Terran's doing. But it worked. It paid off. And again, you can kind of see the stress sink into uh, Rush's face in each of these losses. Like, oh, man, he's starting to catch up to me. You know, this whole series has really been a story of Sulky playing catch up to Rush. Rush is so close to escaping the best of seven, going on to the finals and prepping for that. But Sulky keeps coming back. He keeps figuring out um, little patterns, little tells. Um, and he's, he's, he's doing it. And, and we're now here in this final game. I, I couldn't be more excited. And, and what a what better map to end this on than Retro Artosis? That's true. Retro has given us just insane Terran vs. Zerg games. And even from Solky himself, uh, a great map to finish it off on. Cannot wait. What's your gut, Tasis? Who takes this? I think it's Solky Artosis. Oh, what wow. You? you know what? I'm going to go with Solky as well. I think that Rush at this point... He may be a little bit uh, too stressed, too much pressure on him. Sulky has won in too many positions that I think Rush uh, wanted to have work his way. Yeah, I'm going with Sulky as well, Tasteless. All right, guys, we're going to go into this final match. Remember, the winner of this best of seven goes on to the finals of season 16 of the ASL. This is it. Rush for Sulky. Let's settle this once and for all. Okay, in the top right, cross spawns, by the way, we've got Rush here in the teal. And in the bottom left, it's going to be Sulky in white. I'm really watching what Sulky's going to do here for the early game. Is there any chance <laughs> we have another nine pool? You know, when we uh, were doing the opening of the, of the show, we were talking about the fact that Sulky really does have an insane range of play. Like, he'll cheese a lot. But he also would do really turtly macro games. Um, you know, is there any chance he does that nine pool build? It's not common to see nine pool that often in TVZ, but we've seen it two out of at least what, you know, we now it's going to be seven games. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think that that's a big part of being a championship level Zerg. It really struck me when, when Fantasy was talking about that, that, uh, you know, that he remembered, you know, from Gamers 8 when Fantasy won, he, he mentioned that he thought that Jadong was playing too safe and not not playing aggressively enough. And there it is again. There's the nine pool. Uh, it, but it does feel like if wow. you're going to win tournaments as Zerg, you have to play some percentages. You have to you have to play some aggression and look for these openings. Because as we saw in La Campanella, if you let Terran do what they want at this level it seems Im like impossible to get past. So Solky is going to go ahead and take that risk and Tasteless, oh my God. He is going command center first again. Oh Dude. man. What? Oh. Oh my God. Wild, wild. So this is almost perfect for Solky. If Solky was in a close spawn, I would be saying 100% victory here. I think there's a little bit higher chance of holding. Now he's actually cross spawn scouting. Are you kidding? Oh, oh, never mind. He was checking for for a <laughs> proxy <laughs> barracks. I was like, that's too much, Tasteless. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> no, I was gonna say because I, I thought the same thing. The drone came in there. And I'm like, wait a minute. Then which way? Like, I guess in the lings, if he cross spawn scouts, they would just go to the upper left. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I guess he just wanted to see, are there barracks in the middle of the map? Is there anything I need to be ready for? Now, uh, the command center is on the high ground, but, dude, I think this should just topple him. And by the way, we've never quite had a best of seven in uh, an ASL that's had this many kind of 
counters of build orders. Like the reason why Rush is going for command center first again is that no one would ever do this twice in a row in theory, right? Yeah. You would have used up all your nine pool builds. And so he sees the links. You can see that, that, that it hasn't broken Rush yet. He's trying to figure out uh, some kind of plan. Can he just try to hold off? He knows the command center's on the high ground. There's still hope. He needs to try to basically, you know, use these SCVs like linemen to block the links mm -hmm. off and try to isolate them if he can. And it's up to Soul Key to keep these lings alive as long as possible to cause as much disruption as possible. And sometimes that's in lost mining time. Sometimes that's in picking off Marines. Sometimes that's in picking off SCVs. Right now, he's splitting them a little bit. So harassing up there with one group and then this other group picking off what SCVs he can. I mean, you know, this isn't terrible. Uh, I guess it really shows you that a lot of these nine pool rushes really are hinged on the fact that you can kill the SCV making the command center. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times kill the, the Marines coming out of the barracks on the low ground. This isn't looking like the end of the world. I mean, it's a lot of lost mining time, but the command center finished, the lings were chased out. Mm -hmm. You know, Sulky did not make more Zerglings. He just made the six or maybe it was eight. I'm actually not sure, but he made, you know, those and then he just stopped. And so this game is going to go on. I mean, it was supposed to be a build order win, but I guess the subtleties, the nuance of the type of command center first that Rush went for gave him a little bit of an insurance policy. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, just the fact that he's cross spawn and it's in that main base, those two, those two parts are incredibly important. If he had a wall going on, this would be game over. Like, it, it, you know, there, there was a lot of things working for Rush to allow him to still be playing this game. And I think he defended it reasonably well. And, you know, it is a very fast command center, and Solky did go for a nine pull, so there's issues there. But definitely, Solky, you have to look at this and say that he's got a decent advantage. Yeah, I mean, this is very playable. Ling speed's done, by the way. He just pokes it to try to see if there's any more information. And he's going to actually make <laughs> more Zerglings, which I'm a little bit... I guess I shouldn't be surprised by it, but I am. Um... How many more is he gonna get? Oh okay, man, dude, he's just doing it again. What? I'm surprised. I thought I thought when he saw the bunker, he would he would pull it back and start making drones again. But you know what? You got to give some respect for ultra decisive play. Now, two marines are blocking the surround path. The wings cannot surround that depot. They can get good surface area, but that's a lot of damage coming out. Yeah. Um. So I mean, it's always the counterintuitive move here, Sulky. Going to try to attack in now. Um, he's trying to show the four. Now, look at this. He's trying to show four lings and, try, and draw the Marines out. And now, you know, this isn't a tight wall in. Ooh. But he backs up. And so, yeah, this is really smart. I want to know and how you know, fast Sulky's heart is beating right now. He's, like, waiting for uh, the exact moment that he might be able to get a kill. Yeah, exactly. And he can come in here and hit right when the turrets would need to be made the oh. mutants are going to be out and so oh you my see the scds are all laid out in different positions to start the turrets which might be right when he wants to try to come in here i he, guess not it's I, already started i think the idea here is he'll send the mutas to the main to try to draw those marines up and then send the lings in for the bunker yeah no one ever does that yeah. just for the yeah. record no one ever 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 holds speedlings till now so like, Rush right now thinks, like, oh, there's not that many. It's like four, six, eight speedlings, so one bunker is going to be fine. But I think Solky's about to really surprise him. He's going to try to draw the Marines and Medics up. When he sees a fair amount chasing his Mutas, that's when he's going to hit with the Lings. Yeah, but right now, Rush isn't budging. He he's got a really good turret set up. Okay, so the threats are going to start to be generated. Solky backs up. And here we go. He's going in. Yeah, he's going to get a surround on that bunker. Comes in with his Mutalisks as well. He gets rid of the bunker, but doesn't do enough. Barely kills anything there. A great hold from Rush. Yeah, I mean, this is crazy, man. I thought for sure that might end Rush, but Rush stabilizes, immediately restarts the bunker. Our observer is, is clearly showing us, look, there's not a lot of workers. Uh, but the fact that two more drones hatch back there, means that um, Sulky's trying to get back into a little bit more of a macro play. He basically set up a tactic that if it works, it could have maybe forced the command center to lift off and a lot of SCVs to be killed, but um, he's still droning up. So Sulky not all in, 
And again, Sulky is maybe one of the very best in the whole world at being in these aggro positions, but still finding room to, you know, get damage in and still make a drone here or there. And he's trying the same type of thing he did on Apocalypse here, right? Like hit the very edge of a base. See if see if you can find a spot where there's not enough defense. But this spawn on Retro, it's pretty easy to defend up here. Like there's lots of room uh, for you to build turrets. There's great places to stand your Marines. So Sulky's not finding that much yet. But I mean, we just gotta wait and see because he is a master at prying open these Terrans that are in such good defensive spots. So for now, Rush just has to stay back and produce. Look at that turret line. I love that over there. It's such a good formation. It's just so hard for the Mutas to get in in any one position. He really has this kind of cool arcing defense where if the Mutas are going to commit, they're really going to have to eat a lot of turret shots from all angles. Yeah, I've never actually seen turrets laid out like this, but it looks beautiful, and it seems like it's really doing the job. He's got great turret placement all over the place. He's made a ton of turrets. He is going for an add-on on his factory, but as he scans, he's going to see this is still just Mutas, although the Hydralis Den is out, uh, and he's going to have to decide, like, do we go into that siege tank push? He's basically got, like, a turret concave almost over here. Um <laughs> So, he's, you know, when you look at the setup, there's really no, like, Achilles heel that Terran has that the Mutas can really get any damage um, in with. Now, I would imagine these Mutas have plus one air attack, or if they don't, they will uh, soon. Where is the den? Okay, so he's got the den. He's got the Queen's Nest. It's going to be the same tech we've seen from Sulky all along. Uh, and his Muta's trying to just keep uh, Rush busy this entire time. There's so many turrets up here. I don't think I don't think there's anything left that he can attack. There's a ton of turrets at the racks, at the main command center, and at the natural command center. So, like, he's getting a random SCV or Marine kill here and there, which is nice. But he's really going to have to think about his transition because tanks and vessels are coming out right now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, at this point in time... You know, Rush is in pretty okay shape. It's not going to be easy for Rush to push out across the map. Um, you know, it, it is cross spawns, but at the same time, I mean, Rush has really shown just how ferocious he is in some of these positions. You see the scan down there. He sees the uh, the hive tech is on the way. Um, again, the mutas just aren't really able to find that much damage. The base layout is practically perfect here for Rush. Yeah, it, it really is. Like, hey, I'm, I'm in shock of how good all the turret placement is. You can see he really worked on that coming into this series. He's hiding the tanks pretty well as well. Uh, and as this first vessel comes out and he gets his Irradiate, it's going to be very difficult for Sulky to hold this. He's bringing up Lurkers. Maybe he's looking for, I don't know, like a Lurker hold position again. But the vessel is going to ruin those plans. So the Mutas are continuing to roam here. Uh, the the Lurkers are going to come up now. He wants to try to force this Terran to, to maybe use some scans. Let's not forget that Sulky had that insane recovery uh, with the whole position Lurkers. You know, if you can ever snipe the vessel or do anything and then maybe set up something like that for later on, it would be ideal. The three tank push is out now. And what Sulky's doing is he's, you know, setting up the Lurkers, forcing a siege, and then he just runs away. And he's, he's making a buy time immediately, <laughs> uh, you know, bros again here. And there it is, another little hit on that vessel. Sulky's so good. Look at that. He literally just gets, you know, uh, a hex or two away mm. from the tanks in siege mode and then sets back up right away. Oh, a nice irradiate, but a pretty good split there from Sulky as well. He's doing a good job of slowing this down. Oh, the Greater Spire on the way once again alongside the Defiler Mound. So Sulky might, and we might see it this time. If he's slowed this push enough, we could see Guardians actually push back the Siege Tanks. Uh, he's going to come in a little bit further now. He's passing that <gasps> center location. Does he actually have enough? Sulky just going to come in with so many lurkers. The Muta is coming in doing so much damage. Some of what Rush has survives, but Sulky is going to come in for another big blow here. And these tanks are sieged up. 
Artosis, they can't be protected. Solki is overrunning the position of Rush. All the sea shanks gone. The science vessel was killed off. The marine and medic count has been greatly reduced. And now with the defiler coming out, as well as the option of Morph Guardians, it seems like Rush does not have enough tech to hold on. This is wild, man. I mean, with this many lurkers, is it not possible for him to just come down here and bust the bunker? Well, I think if you have a defiler coming, you just stay patient, right? <laughs> and Guardians, eight Guardians, are you kidding me? Solki is out of control. He is about to kill Rush. There is just no way to hold on to this. Yeah, I love the uh, Guardian play after you see the tanks, right? Yeah. Um, you know that at this point in time, everything else is going to be delayed. There's not going to be anything that can easily fight this off. The Defiler's pushing through. I mean, dude, it looks pretty clear to me, Artosis. Sulky is going to the finals. GG. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow. And even Sulky, you see, getting a little bit emotional, a little bit of a shaky hand. There has to be a huge adrenaline dump because he has made it to the ASL finals. We have been talking about this for a long time that Sulky is probably the number one player that should be an ASL champion and is not. And now he really has his shot. What an unbelievable round of four after that unbelievable round of eight from Solky. I mean, this was a really special series. And let's not forget that these crazy nine pool uh, uh, calls from Solky. Yeah. That basically worked every time. I know he didn't win in game one, but I mean, the, the opening was pulled off. He has a very good read on exactly how Rush is going to approach. Um, you know, the matchup, I think we're going to be having an interview in a second here, but, I mean, you know, Solki, he's good at his execution, but his planning is is like no one else. It really is. You're right. He's He's got the killer instinct that the other Zergs don't have. He has the macro skills, the micro skills, but choosing these build orders that you know will sometimes put you behind, and then even then, forcing your way back into it, he is, is he not the best Zerg in the world? He might be. Um, so I want to make sure we don't overlap on the interview here. Sometimes <laughs> when they do the interview, they have like the Caster Park interview him from yeah. where Caster Park sitting, and he just kind of stands there like he's being judged by God, like after <laughs> he's God or something. Like. Well, that that does fit. Um, Caster Park is pretty good at his job, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we're gonna take a quick look um, at this. This was unbelievable macro from Sulky to come out with this many lurkers. He flanks with the mutas, picking off seed shanks or at least putting damage onto them. And it's just, look at that. Unburrows a group of them, moves forward. What an engage from Sulky. What a series, what a tournament from this Zerg player. Yeah, I mean, this was just, uh, you know, and again, even that little fight that we saw back there, that's such a Sulky win where it looks like, okay, here comes Terran's big attack. This is, you know, this is what Rush built up to. And then Sulky just has so much. He completely slaughters it. It's like, oh. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, you know, it, 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 there's so many moments where I cast Sulky games where it's like he's the only player that just seems to suddenly make it look like there was never a chance for the other race to win yeah. with this. Yeah. And the number of games he played where he was like, he had literally no drones mining at his natural. He's just going hard with the, uh, the mutas. And, um, you know, it makes it work. I mean, he's, he's truly a phenomenal player. And a lot of the stuff he's doing, it's a little bit hard to follow. You can see the Observer was going back a lot and trying to highlight certain things mm. in his base. But the way he's, like, keeping the aggression on but making sure he's got a couple drones out here or there, he knows when to do this, this Guardian tech that seems so obvious, you know, post-victory. But we don't really see that that often with other players, right? I mean, mm -hmm. he really has his own take. I think that interview is ready, so we're going to go to that and uh, see how he's feeling. Let's have a word with today's winner, Solki. Your long-awaited ascension is finally here, as the final stage has become reality. Through hard graft and difficult victories, he had finally made it into the grand final of ASL for the first time in its history. How do you feel about making it into the finals? I'm very happy and still shaking. It's been a while since I've made it into any finals. All I can think of now is how much of an even better series I want to show there. Well, even though you're a bit under the weather today, after taking a beating in the first game and losing that in the next one, it must have put some doubt in your head.
that you've always lost in the round of four and you're losing today too? Well, I lost the first game through bad micro. I realized my control just isn't there today. But to be honest, I played different builds than the ones I prepared. I did some impromptu play with all in elements. Well, you mustered all your strength and advanced to the finals. But even this time, it was a really close call. Every time you play these longer series, it goes to the rubber match. You must have thought to yourself, am I losing again? How did you win the last game? Longer series are difficult. It always goes, the, it always goes the distance, so it's quite difficult. I don't know why this keeps happening. I will do what I can to make sure that the finals doesn't end in a 4-3 at least. You managed to pull out of a really tough spot. I wonder who would you rather meet in the finals? Yes, let's talk about that. You can either meet Effort or Mini in the finals. Do you want a Protoss or Zerg now that all the Terrans are gone? In any case, I am quite fond of both players. But considering this is my first ASL finals, wouldn't it be better if we avoided a mirror and I played a Protoss? So I'm hoping for Mini to win, a, win the semi-final. Well, you've managed to break the streak and uh, you made it through a longer series to make it into the Grand Finals. A lot of fans are waiting to see you perform on that stage and a lot of viewers are also sending their support online. Would you like to take this opportunity to thank your fans and colleagues? I was always sorry to the fans who kept showing me support uh, on a daily basis, but I finally made it to the finals better late than never, so I'll do my best to win this season. Also, I said to my colleagues from Light Club, who showed great support that if I make it into the finals, we'll try to meet up again so we can hopefully do that. I have a meal. Uh, I also want to thank Light, Mind, uh, Barracks, JYJ, Royal and SAG for practicing with me. I hope they can help me once again. I'll show my best in the Grand Final. Thank you. Once again, congratulations on today's victory. We can't wait to see you in the finals. Congratulations. What a... Just what a, what a fun best of seven this was. You know, we don't very often get to the seventh game in a best mm. of seven. It's actually a problem in, <laughs> you know, the, I mean, you, you know, <laughs> a lot of times we get four ones or four twos. Uh, you don't believe me, just look at the statistics. But, um, you know, when we do get to that full game seven, we get so much great StarCraft out of it. Yeah. And uh, I mean, what a fun way to end this with that double nine pool play. Again, this yeah. is really different than a lot of other Zerks. I mean, he's choosing to possibly be at a build order disadvantage, knowing he has to win two games in a row. And he knows that Rush is a very strategic player. And part of, I think, what it was prompting Rush in some of these games to go command center first is is after a, an attack like that, in a previous game, you go, okay, well, you can't rush me every yeah. time, right? Well, yeah. So he goes, watch me. Of course I can. Yeah, and, and Solki saw that pattern before. I think he planned that uh, today to do that because remember you went nine pool game one and then game two, we were talking about how Rush is like, well, you're not going to nine pool twice in a row so I can command center first. So yeah, I think, yeah, I think exactly. he, he perfectly read the situation. Honestly, this is such a championship mentality, the way he's choosing his builds. It really reminds me, if you recall, of MVP in StarCraft Two, where it's like, oh, game seven, most important game of my life. Yeah, let's cheese. You know, it's like, oh, game seven here to go to the finals finally? Nine pool it is. <laughs> you know? Whereas yeah. if your opponent just goes regular barracks, expand you nine pool, you're like, damn, this is going to be really hard. <laughs> you know? And that's the most common build. So uh, there are definitely some risks that he's taking, but he's reading it correctly. He's playing amazingly. Even when he's getting behind, he's able to grind himself back. I think this showing from Solki is the strongest showing of a Zerg that we have seen. And we've had Zerg champions here, but this is, it, this feels special. He's killing the absolute best Terrans in long series. And coming up next, guys, we're going to be recording this just 24 hours from when we recorded um, the one that you're listening to right now. It's going to be 
Mini versus Effort. Oh my God, I'm super excited about this. Let's not forget that Mini is like the only Protoss that made it to the round of eight. Uh, Protosses have been dying left and right. It's actually just kind of been a bad year for Protoss, if I'm gonna be honest. Um, you know, especially after Mini had such a great showing in years before, but I, I think he has a very good shot of taking this. Of course, Effort, you know, if you guys have been following just ASL, you might think Effort's just, you know, he's another pretty good Zerg. This guy was like top five, top six in the world pre StarCraft two. Yeah, he was the next he coming is a of Jadon. Legend. Yeah, yeah, you yes. know, he was. He was really the next guy, and his career was kind of cut short, just like Fantasies was. Uh, you know, and he's just he's like a player that never got to quite show what he was made of. But uh, you know, here he is once again, another chance at another finals here in ASL. And, I mean, if he makes it to that finals, man, his ZVZ is something else. It really is. Uh, and that might be, you know, what could stop Sulky. Um, well, Artosis, this was a lot of fun. Do you have any closing thoughts? I'll let you talk this time for once. Well, thank you so much, Jason, considering I'm the only one on camera. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for the support over on the Patreon. We really appreciate you. Check it out, patreon.com forward slash ASL English. Uh, oh, thanks, oh, oh, thanks wait, for watching. Wait, wait, wait. No, I'm, also, closing, uh, I'm closing it. No, okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the finals has been moved. Uh, oh. It's going to be on the 15th on Sunday. So if you're going to come, it, it, that's where it is. Every once in a while, they move these dates around. Uh, that's not on camera for you guys since Artos is on camera. But, yeah, if you're going to see the finals, it's on the 15th. All right. Well, that does it, guys. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next match.